There we go. Sorry about that. Music was a little loud to kick things off. How's everyone doing? Ooh. Starting two minutes late. How unbecoming. <laughs> We're all ready, though. So, I, I saw a, peop a few people in chat wondering what the art was. That is fan art <laughs> that was made for Quarantine. Uh, that, they're in the description, actually. I linked to their Twitter. Dippy Dudes made that. And it's quality. Here, you know what? I have the file. Let me just show you all the full thing. Add image. I can work OBS. Don't worry. I actually have a lot of experience with streaming programs. I mentioned this before, but I was a competitive gaming caster long before I was a YouTuber. Here we go. Let's show this off. This is awesome. Boom. There. That's the full thing. It, it's wonderful. There was actually another... Um, Another bit of fan art that someone else made. I. It's tricky because I'd want to link their Twitter in a way that's obvious. But I don't know that I can do that. It's on my Twitter. I retweeted it. I'll talk to them about it. Um, but then I already for tomorrow have another piece of art that I'm going to be using. It It's wonderful. It, it always it always tickles me when I see people <laughs> making art based on anything that I do. Okay. Let's see. I think the music might still be a little bit loud. How does this sound to everyone? How's the balance? Let me turn myself up a bit in OBS. I'm probably just a teeny bit quiet. Okay. Tea today. Let's get this started. In earnest. Today, I've, I'm actually a little bit excited because I've never tried this tea before. This is a Sencha uh, from Ichigo Trading. And I've never tried any Ichigo Trading tea before. It's technically Ichigo Trading and Travel Company. I literally have never opened this. Um, I got this a while ago. And it should still be good. So this is a Sencha. That's a, it's a kind of Japanese green tea. It's probably the most common kind. I, I really like Sencha. In fact, I've gone through all of the Sencha that I have. This is, besides Genmaicha, this is all I've got. Um, in terms of green tea, because I drank myself out of house and home. Yeah, Ayumi. Uh, this is Ayumi. Um, so if you're interested, I, I'm i just going to give this a try. This is going to be first impressions, I know. Down the rabbit hole is now a reaction channel. When's the new video coming? I, I know, it, there's always going to be questions about that. And I know people who have been here for a while, like, have heard me say this over and over. Um, It's... It's going to be coming in the next few weeks. Um, I'm just in the video editing phase right now. And in fact, today's guest is going to be Ryan Probert. He's the person who's writing all the music. And he's working on the music right now. Uh, since the narration's done, I'm editing it together and sending sending it off to him in chunks. Hmm. Buzardo. I, I'm so glad you checked out Ignea. Ignea is one of my favorite new bands. They're incredible. Yeah, they're niche. They're strange, but they're really good. And yeah, Tenshi Ladybug is pointing out this is like this is a mukbang. This is like an anti mukbang mukbang. This is I I hate mukbangs, so this is like my response to it. Okay, so here's how I'm going to steep this. A pretty standard way of doing sencha that I was taught that's really good and has not failed me yet is the first so you steep it three times the first time you steep it for 30 seconds 
um, oh god, it's been so long since I've made sencha. Christ, it's um, it's at about 130 degrees for like 130, 135 for 30 seconds. Then you steep it again, 10 degrees Fahrenheit hotter for a minute and a half, and then you steep it again for another like 30 seconds to a minute. So that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm pretty sure I got that right. This is interesting. This is very like fine tea. We're going to get lots of tea particulates in there. That's going to make the tea a little bit bitter probably, but that's okay. We're just trying it. This is an experiment for sure. And that's kind of the funny thing about tea. Um, even if you get the same kind of tea over and over again, you know, year by year, it's going to be a little bit different each time. 20. We're going to do like 125. We're going to go under. Because the thing with Sencha is that it's really whiny. If you get the water too hot, then it freaks out and gets really bitter. You need longer steeps to extract the most. Yeah, that's that that's not surprising. Um, but we'll um, might do, I don't know, might do a little bit longer. You really don't need that much time for Sencha, though, in my experience. But yeah, um, each tea sort of demands its own steep time and its own temperature to get the most out of it. And you really have to experiment to figure out, um, to figure out what you like uh, and how to get what you want out of each tea. It's in that way, it's very personal. Like there are tons of people who love it really bitter and astringent. And I'm just not, I'm not about that. Tea is naturally astringent, but like, I don't like the astringency to the degree that a lot of like tea snobs do. <laughs> so I just steep it for, you know, lower temperatures, sometimes shorter amounts of time. Oh, Celestial Seasoning. So that's, that's, they're the people that do throat coat, right? Because I grew up with that a lot when I was sick. I, I don't get sick very much. Would I say I'm an essential worker? <laughs> I hate it. Thanks, Austin. Um, but if you don't like tea, um, ident first you need to identify like what you don't like about it. If you don't like it because it's bitter, you're just drinking the wrong kinds of tea. Um, for someone who really likes gentle flavors, but is afraid of the bitterness and is afraid of oversteeping it, try white tea. Almost any white tea, you can't go wrong. Uh, but if you like the stronger flavors, but don't like the bitterness, um, ooh, hey, that, yeah, that was quick. Um, you could probably go with a flavored oolong. Like, there's a strawberry oolong that I like. It's, it's an oolong with just a little bit of strawberry in it. Um, not chunks. Would I classify myself as a tea snob? No. <laughs> I, I don't care enough. Sensitive to bitterness and tannin, so tea is hard to get into. White tea. Yeah, bitter tea is usually the, a mark of wrong preparation. Although, oh, that's a story. Uh, let, me, let me start making this tea and let me tell you guys a story. Let's... Hmm. Let's do this for 35 seconds. Okay, 40 total. I'll start it and we'll see how this goes. We'll make a couple of cups. We're making very small amounts each time, just half a cup. So we can try things out like this. No worries. Right. So the story. I got this tea at a tea convention, and there was someone that was making tea in this big bowl with a gigantic spoon, and there was, like, he just dumped leaves in there. So many leaves in this thing. 
and the water, like, any time that the water got low, he just added more water. And, oh my god, it was so bitter. I remarked to him that it was smoker's tea. It's okay to get a little bit of the leaves in there as long as you drink it quick. The problem is, if you get leaves in your cup... Oh gosh, that's coming out slow. Because the leaves are in the way. Oh boy, this is going to be interesting. This maybe was not ideal. Hmm, might have to come up with a new method. The tea leaves are too fine. So, he's making this tea in this bowl and he's serving it with this little ladle that he has. And, oh my god. I just, I couldn't handle it. I drank it to be kind. Okay, let's try this. Hmm. Oh. That's interesting. It's got the vegetal sort of flavor that Sencha usually does, but there's something else in there. It's like... Orange. It has like orange notes to it. I know, I know I'm saying the word notes like a huge asshole. But it's very, it's a very mild sort of orange flavor. <laughs> it's, in my defense, in my defense about like the tea convention, everyone, that was really funny because, okay, there, there's a kind of a fun story about tea in America recently. Yeah, I, I am gonna have to switch. I The problem is this is the only thing that I've got for steeping really besides my poison pot. <laughs> it's, um, oh no, you know what? I do have, yeah, this isn't gonna work. Um, I have a basket and that might actually be better. So at this tea convention, every booth they had was um puer because for a long time puer had some really strong import restrictions on it because it's fermented and then they recently released a lot of these restrictions so that suddenly the west was flooded with puer teas and so everyone's obsessed with it right now and the ironic thing is, I'm not that into Pu'er's by default. Kukicha tends to have citrus flavor, so there might be stems in my sencha. Yeah, maybe. I'm not seeing any. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Yeah, they do. They did leave them in. Funny number is watching right now. Oh. <laughs> Cheesecloth? I don't have any cheesecloth. I know, I'm, I'm like horrendously unequipped. A real tea lovers just eat the leaves straight. Yes. When is the next video going to be uploaded? When it's done. <laughs> That's my philosophy at this point. The, the video needs as long as it takes. Um, but it's not going to be much longer. I'm in the video editing phase right now. And we're going to be bringing on my composer very, very shortly. Uh, in fact, now might be a good time. I... This isn't ideal, but we're going to keep using it. Because it's... Well, maybe I should get my basket. Mm, that'd be kind of goofy putting the basket in here. We could try it. You know what? Screw it. This is going to look stupid. But we're going to try it. Mm. Give me just a moment. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's really... Ugh. It's really tricky getting out of this setup because I've got the table in front of me, I've got my mic stand to my left, and I can only turn my chair part of the way. So it's... It's really tough to get out. I'm really surrounded here.
Gudmundur, Gudmundur Thor Carlson, good name, good solid name, um, asking if I if I'm a elite gamer. I'm a, I'm a PC gamer for the most part, though I do have a Switch. By the way, if you give me a super chat, I'm extremely thankful. Um, but I don't want to interrupt the stream, so I'm going to be reading those at the very end. Don't worry, I'll get to them. Uh, and yeah, the basket is kind of cute, isn't it? It's just really convenient. I'll have it right here at the ready. Right now... Oh, oh god, my feet are in a weird position. Okay, we're gonna... We're gonna do this. My feet are gonna go underneath the table and we're going to hope that this works. <laughs> it is a very constricted setting, but it's okay. Headphones on. Let's get Ryan in here. Hey Ryan, you there? Oh, hey Fred. How you doing? Uh, yeah, I've not been following the stream so you might have to clue me in where we are <laughs> don't worry about it um i was just saying that my setup was really restrictive and it's hard to get out of it so when i when i get up i look like a geriatric man like geriatric old 80 year old man i want to say you look like that normally but that's too cruel i think I, should I think, story but you just said it <laughs> i i i said it with a caveat that it's not true um shall i tell the story of the uh poison pot because yes, so FYI, what? this pot, that this the poison pot was given to me by Ryan. He's in here right now. Ryan, why don't you tell the world why you tried to poison me? Yeah, you've been like <laughs> shitting on me the last few days. I'm okay, teasing me... you. God damn it. There's there's no nuance on the internet, but Okay, so <laughs> I I think we were talking about like Christmas or something. Um, I'm not drinking tea, I'm having a- it's my birthday, so I'm having a birthday- beer. Yeah, right! Happy birthday, Ryan! Every- everyone, everyone in chat, give Ryan a happy birthday. Oh, trying to embarrass me now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, the death pop. Um, so you were like- I was like, hey, because we, we met at Christmas, actually, in person. Yes, we did. And I was like, okay, Fred, can I get you anything? I'm in China. I, I know you love tea. And you- you were like, get me one of those pots, e Yixing pots, and I was like, Okay, okay, um, sure, I'll see what I can do. And I was like, you know, China is really easy to get ripped off. It's really, really easy to get, um, you know, fooled by a fake product. You know, they can be incredibly convincing. Right. And I was like, okay, well, next week I'm going to Taiwan. Um, well, I think I'm less likely to be fooled, but I'm not entirely sure. And what I did was I did all the research. I Googled it. I... Well, so I, I I did everything I could possibly think of to make sure the people I were gonna, I was going to send knew what kind of pot to get, and so I I, I gave it to these uh, Taiwanese guys, my partner's parents, and um, they went off and they went to Zhou Fun, which is the uh, place that inspired the setting for Spirited Away, um, okay. you know the uh, Studio Ghibli, and. They went there, they came back with this pot, and I was like, this is perfect, it can't be fake, it must be real. <laughs> they, like, the guy, he makes his own tea, uh, he yeah. must know what he's talking about. It turns out he makes his own tea from, like, grass, he finds, and moss. Apparently that's a that's a thing. And, I, I've never heard of that. Um, so I... I oh, whoops. Sees, uh, like, 9,000 kilometers to meet you, and it survives, which is kind of a miracle. And uh, so finally, it, uh, I give it to you, it's in one piece, and you take it home. And it gets home in one piece, and I'm like, wonderful. And then like last week, you sent me a message and said, pot's probably fake, and it's poisonous. <laughs> well, I, it, it, I'm not sure if it's poisonous. Um, oopsie daisy. Sorry, I, I just realized I need to do this. Um, real oh, whoops. We're okay. We're okay. Right, so... The trick is that... I learned that Yixing pots from a certain year were from, um... Like, look, uh, pots from a certain year had a toxic chemical in it, 
and you said that you uh, that this pot was gotten at an antique store, but you said it wasn't that old. I'm like, oh no, that puts it right in the range of the barium chloride. Like that's the chemical. And yeah, the lady said it was from the 90s. <laughs> right. Um, so like I'm freaking out. So you know I'm I go and check, and one of the dudes is like, this is definitely not a Yixing pot. And so I, I, on one hand, I was like. You know that that's kind of a relief because I'd rather you know be able to use it if I can, but I I wasn't that worried about it um, being Yixing or not. It'd be nice, but it's like you know it's 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 a really lovely pot. But now the question is, what is it? And it's like this mystery pot. I, I'd love a little flag that I could stick in it now with a question mark. But you've already <laughs> used it. I have used you, you've it. You've already used it, and that, that, you're, you're not dead, so it can't be that poisonous. Oh yeah. <laughs> you, you know that it chronic poisoning is a thing. Is it chronic poisoning? It's the opposite of acute poisoning. Not obtuse poisoning. <laughs> no, nobody gets smart. I, I'm no expert. I, I, I don't know. Um, slow poisoning. Any, anyway, you, you get the idea. So, despite my best intentions, I could have poisoned you. No, you just maybe, like maybe, probably not. It's it's like it's a beautiful pot. Like that's something that everyone was saying is like this pot is beautiful, right? Everyone thought it was really nice, and there are more fake Yixing pots than there are actual Yixing pots. So it's really not that surprising. Yeah, definitely, because there are like there's like one factory. Um, in all, well, I think there's two now. There was originally one factory in all of China that made the pots. Um, and then I think they set up a second one during the 80s. Mm. Maybe that's the poison pot factory is the second one. It might be. There, there were certain labels, right? Um, yeah. That would have that on. Okay. We're going to try the second steep. And we're going to see how this goes. I, I think that 125 was just the right length of time to steep it and because the leaves got stuck it caused a problem uh well we're gonna try it again i need to <laughs> figure up uh, we're gonna have to just use the little basket next time it doesn't go in there now i spent sort of years of my career with chinese business people trying to win me over by giving me tea and yeah yeah i've never been a big tea drinker at all well, you gave me, um, well, your partner gave me, um, some wonderful tea. Um, you know what? I kind of want to go and unwrap one to show the stream, because it's so cool looking. You, you go ahead for it. I, I don't know if I can, I can be entertaining in your absence, but I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. Um, you can, all right, let's see. Okay, you can do it. I believe in you. Well, I, uh, I bought you the tray as well. The tr the you did? Tr you the yeah, this tray is also from Ryan, everyone. Like, he... I, I mentioned that on the first day, but he he got me the pot, he got me the tea tray, which I use all the time now, and he also got me the special tea that I'm going to go show you. It is weird. Alright, be right back. Entertain them. Um, I, I, yeah, I'll do my best. Tell them about... The production process for the music on the Temple OS episode. Because you really made them... that episode. Uh, okay. So tell, tell them about how you got copyright I claimed. If you're going... uh oh, did we lose him? Made. So it had like this incredibly. Oh, uh, you, you cut out. You cut out. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm in the countryside. It's. Uh... Oh, okay. Here, uh, go again um, while I go get the tea. Um, so Temple OS was made during this like crazy time when I was traveling all over the world. And I like different parts of it. One part was written in the UK. Another part was written in China. Another part was lit written in uh, like Kuala Lumpur. And uh, it kind of had this very uneven writing pro process, but it kind of fitted the... Um, Temple OS episode because the Temple OS episode kind of goes from curiosity to sort of darkness and fear and anger and paranoia to tragedy 
and it it meant that I was kind of writing the um, curiosity parts in the UK. I was writing the fear and darkness in China, and I was in Kuala Lumpur to write the sad ending music. So that's the story of Temple of S. But it sounds like Fred isn't back yet, so I might have to waffle for like another 10 seconds. Um, what else can I say? Well, we and Fred have been, we've made a CD together, an EP, not a CD. It's not been released in a physical form as a download. And um, so what we did was, Fred uh, recorded his hurdy gurdy playing. And he sent me these improvisations and I wrote music around them. And that's a new EP that's just come out. So if you look on Fred's Twitter timeline, you'll be able to see um, uh, that recording and i'm really hoping fred is back by now yes i just got back oh thank god we're good <laughs> <laughs> what, what what did i miss what did i miss i i started talking about answer our cd oh our, our yes recording. yes yes because i went through temple of s and i was talking about how i'd been in like it was like written when i was all over the world it was yes. really quite a weird um production process mm. and then i was like well shit fred's not back and i've i've got to kill time now um, so, you we recorded a, a CD together, but we we don't live near each other. We live like thousands of miles apart. So right, right. Send me the recordings. Mm -hmm. um, but you you I remember the one thing I do remember really clearly about making the CD was you were terrified, right? Yeah, I um, like I, I recognize that I'm not like amazing at the hurdy gurdy, and so I. I was like, oh god, you know, people are going to be hearing my playing and it's front and center. I'm a lot more confident when I'm just speaking. I feel like my speaking voice is, like, strong enough. But the Gertie is something... I, I That's that's just how I am with music. I'm very self-conscious about my music. You know, I'm fine with anything else at this point, but my music, like, anything relating to it is just... Uh. I think it's, like, particularly tough with the CD because it's improvisation. Yes, it all um except all but one of the tracks were improvisation. Oh yeah, that's true, yeah. I wrote, yeah. I wrote one of them. You gave me sheet music uh, for one of them. But like it took I me forever to either... record them because I was so embarrassed. Every time I recorded, yeah. I'm like, this is trash, this is trash, this is trash. You were even more terrified about the notated movement. You were really you put that off for like months. I did. <laughs> it it was bad. It was really bad. It's fine. We're, we're through it now and we can reflect on our hard work. You know? <laughs> I think it, I, you did a fantastic job. It really was your brainchild in the end. Like it was it was yours. And I, I'm glad that I could help it. Well, you know, it's, it was an experiment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it, it worked out pretty good. So we can maybe do more in the future. Um, I, 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 I am quite proud of it. It's, I mean, I don't um, all my other CDs have been released by other people. So mm -hmm. like um, when I have a CD made, it's normally made by a group of musicians. Right. And they record it. And like even my, my fucking guitar pieces don't even have my name on them. It just has the name of the piece on them. And my name's right. on the back of the CD. So this is like one of the first CDs I've released, which is like mine and yours, obviously. But it has my name on the front and um, it feels like I own it. It's on my own Bandcamp page, you know? Yeah, it, it definitely is yours. I like I, I make no claims of ownership to it. It's just like I'm I'm just really glad that I could help you make something. Cause it was all his direction. Like he gave me direction for what to improvise and I did my best to interpret it. No, it wasn't though, because you, you did the first part all on your like as you know, do something exciting for me and you Right, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I was you really wanted me to explore the different weird sounds that you could get out of it. So I'm like, you know, making percussive sounds. I'm uh, playing a lot with like the clacking and like scraping noises. Because yeah. <laughs> like it's, you can do a surprising amount with the hurdy gurdy given its mechanical nature. Uh, and you did, you did some things I didn't really could, I didn't imagine could be done with the instrument. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not particularly uh, well versed in hurdy gurdy music. Mm -hmm. um, my first experience of it was literally writing the music for the hurdy gurdy episode. Right. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then for that one, like I just played Stella Splendens for the example. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think if there's one criticism with that episode, is it that it does need more hurdy gurdy? It does need more hurdy gurdy. Like I, well, I mentioned like I, I was really nervous about like playing the gurdy. Oh my god, the tea literally is just not coming out. Oh, it's, and it's just it's dumping the cursed leaves. teapot again. No, this isn't the teapot. Now, now this is just the Sencha being a bitch. This is normal bitchiness. You sure it's not the cursed teapot? I'm sure. Oh, may, may, maybe the curse isn't with the teapot. Maybe the curse is with you. Oh, shit. Your presence no, but, like, is causing this. Let me see I, I, I can't oh, think oh. of anything else that's cursed. Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Here's what I'm going to do. I know that this is going to like ruin the last steep, but this is what we're going to do anyway. Gonna do this. Ha ha! I got it into the basket. <laughs> that was. So, this is so bad. Oh my god. I can't see what you're doing, Fred. So I have to. Start I I taking... okay. I, I poured a little bit of water into the cup, uh, into the steeper, and like just to get the leaves out and into the basket. Uh. It's okay. I just... This this is going to be subpar, and I know that, but I'll be damned if I don't use all of these all of these leaves <laughs> um right i was gonna share the special tea oh yeah sorry go yeah, for yeah yeah no sorry, it's all good. i just kept i kept talking no you're fine um okay this is <laughs> the the label on the front says or on the back says gorgeous and charming well that that's you through and through fred Aww. oh Shucks. god damn it the the bromance is going to explode in the It is, yeah. Room. It always happens. It always happens, inevitably. Uh, yeah, tradition, culture, specially selected and processed from the finest and tender raw tea leaves. Does Bruno Mars is gay? <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Okay, right. Yes. So, remember yesterday. Yeah, I need to tell everyone. Um, yesterday, I read the entirety of the Does Bruno Mars is gay? article and someone made a fake down the rabbit hole with it and it's amazing it may be the best down the rabbit hole shit post ever and if, if there's is. been some good down the rabbit hole shit posts oh absolutely like the shit posting is odd, like just occasionally it's incredible okay so it comes in these little bags and if i open it up i'm, I'm gonna move this real quick if I open this up, oh, I've got I've got the Wings of Redemption dual music going while I open this. I can't hear the music. I think it would be too weird if I had my own music in the background while I'm, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, come on, there we go. All right, so I open it up like this, and then the tea is wrapped. Further packaging, so it's in here. If I open this up, come on, I want to do this without destroying the packaging because I want to repackage it. Okay. Uh, I might just have to undo this. No, here we go. So check this out. This is the tea. What they've done is they've... Whoopsie daisy. Nope, yep. There go. There go. There it all goes. Nope. Good. So this is Pu'er that has been stuffed into a tangerine, and unfortunately the tangerine's falling apart. It's quite brittle, so it's not that surprising. But yeah, it's really wild. I'll go ahead and leave it out so people can look at it. <laughs> it's cool. Oh. But yeah, the point is, is you, your, huh? Is it your favorite tea? No. It's not my favorite tea, uh, but it's cool. And it's really yeah, fun. It's, it's, I, pretty, it's pretty strange. I've never seen that before. Even in China, I never saw yeah, it's wild, right? Mm. It's I I'm I'm saving it. You know what? I actually do want to package it away again because I don't want it to like dry out and oxidize. I'm okay Colin showing says it. Says it's, it's not tea. It's a mini baby bell. That that makes me happy. <laughs> this is really cute. But yeah, the this stuff is really it, it's delicious. I I tried it with Corey and Elise, and I I got oh, a glass what? teapot actually to make it in. Uh, non-cursed tea. And not, yeah, it, it's just all glass, so you can see the tea being steeped. It's cool. I'm probably going to use it one of these days. It makes three cups. I'll use it just so people can see it. 
that's really special. Yeah, you should, you should definitely use it in an episode. In a, in a stream. In a stream, yeah, I will, I will. Ah, uh, what brand is it? God knows. It's Tradition I Tea Gift. Because mm. I get given so much, I get given so much fucking tea. <laughs> and like, I don't know what to do with this stuff. It's, I have cupboards full of tea um, from people who are essentially trying to rip me off. Because, you know, if somebody gives you something as a gift, it's, it's never really a gift, you know? Right. It's, 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 uh, it's to turn your attitude um, towards them, you know, to make you um, take a positive approach there. Right, and yeah. That That's so much more true when you're involved in business and people are like, oh, we want to use you for this thing. Have a gift. Uh, and right. your guard is down, you know? It makes it harder to turn them down. Yeah. I've, I'm immune to it now, but um, I still have shit loads of tea. Hmm. <laughs> CJ Hunt is talking about the flowering teas. Those are a fun little gimmick. I don't know, like, the whole concept is kind of weird because you have all... All the different leaves are going to have different ideal steep times unless it's made in particular. They're made to be pretty. And they are pretty. I, I don't know if the tea would be good. I've never tasted it. But I am dubious. This tea is completely ruined. <laughs> <laughs> The problem is that a bunch of the leaves got into the cup, and so those leaves have been steeping constantly. Goodbye. The, the, the probert curse strikes again. You did this to me. You, you're one of the few people I've ever worked with, Fred, who can actually say my last name properly. With, with like, OSW Review, it's become like a, a meme that they can't say my name properly. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's because the curse has been passed on to me. Now it's Knudsen, Knudsen, Knudsen. Just anything but Knudsen, right? Internet historian teases me with that. He's out and out said, it's like, I know how to pronounce your last name. I just say it Knudsen to bother you. <laughs> I, had a, I had a question for you, Fred, actually. Sure. Um, well, when did you start learning the hurdy gurdy? How old were you? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, that's that's maybe too personal because it'll give your, it could give your age away. No, it was it was only a uh, few years ago. Okay, so you can say that without giving your age away. Great. Right. Yeah. Because um, I know your age is one of the cl most closely guarded secrets in all of um, <laughs> YouTube. It's not that I um, care that much. It's just fun th for people not to know. Because one of the things I thought was like really awesome, um, making the recording together was really cool, was that like you you did it. Like you're not a. Um, you know, you're you're not you've not studied. You didn't study music when you were young, right? Uh, I did to a certain extent, but like probably not. Like just choir, right? Not a lot of theory, not a lot of yeah, practice with instruments. I and you just you just you know you go for it, and that's really commendable. And I was reflecting on that this week. You know, uh, Bill Withers, you know, passed away, and one, uh, you know, the great songwriter, mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, written two of the greatest songs of the last sort of 50 years and when he started music he was 29 you know mm -hmm. and i just i'm just absolutely mesmerized by that because i i always thought of myself as kind of a, a latecomer to music I right was, um i was about 14 13 14 when i decided i wanted to write music um and i i just kind of did it and i always felt like um even when i was at university i found it like i felt like i was kind of on the back foot compared right. to other people um, That's so much better. Oh, as, I just used the basket, and it works so much better. Continue. <laughs> um, but as I got older, I realized, you know, um, there's, there's a kind of state of mind. You, I kind of put that on myself, that I always felt like I was a step behind other people because I started when I was older. But right. in many ways, it doesn't really matter. You just no. get experience over time. Yeah, it, 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 and, really, it really does yeah. not matter what age you start. I, I see a lot of people and they have a lot of anxiety, particularly in music, about how old they were when they started learning or how old they are now and they're making music and they're not getting success so far. And it's, it's you know, not necessarily, some, not necessarily something to worry about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... There are only a few things that you can only do at a young age, and most of them are sports. 
Like, if I wanted to get into dance now, it's way too late. There's no way I'd ever be able to do anything. Like, I, I'm past the point. Like, I, I am too old for it to eat, to like, I am where someone would be at like the end of their dance career, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, it, and, and like, I don't know, where, where is that age actually? I might, I might be, I might no, because be completely you, not. You're a dancer, but then you become a choreographer, right? You, mm. you tell I think that's, dancers what to do. That, that's usually how it goes, isn't it? Dancing is a particularly punishing career. I, it, you know, working on like intensely hard floors all the time, and there's pe the, the the lengths dancers I've seen go to to keep the weight down. I remember there's an incredible documentary. Um, oh shit! What's the? Okay, I can't remember what the documentary, the name of the piece of dance is about. Um, but uh, all they do is smoke and drink coffee, uh, and you never saw these dancers eat throughout the entirety of this documentary. <laughs> um, it's 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 terrifying. Come on, I'm gonna try and remember that uh, name of that dance now. <laughs> Inform me, time for you to go down the rabbit hole. It was it was uh, Rosa's Dance Rosa, which is a dance by. I've got all the names here, but I can't remember. It doesn't tell me the name of the person who did it. It's kind of fun but seeing it's... people try to guess my age in chat, actually. Yeah, they're all wrong. They um, <laughs> they're, they're, Every I'm single not, one of them. Right. And and like, the ones who are, they, no, the person who got it right was uh, the person who said, I'm a 2,000-year-old I'm a owl. It's true. That's the only person who got it right. I was created in a lab eight years ago. He escaped, and now he <laughs> makes YouTube. I, um, oh... That's fun. I like that room. That oh man, I'm just remembering. I when I was little, when I played pretend with my friends, I I remember that my I, I'm I'm just seeing like the created in a lab. That was kind of my character's backstory. I, I was you know edgy <laughs> when I was little, and the whole idea was that he had these spikes coming out of his palms that that ideally would be used for feeding he could, he could spit acid out of them and then the way that he fed like he didn't eat normally anymore what he did was it was like a spider where he'd jab it into the person's abdomen this is elementary school by the way he'd jab it into the person's is... abdomen and fill them with acid to like melt their innards and then drain it out back through <laughs> the this spike is like Proto furry, proto fusona. Like it would, it would like the the spike was uh, trisected, where it would open up. So he'd stick it inside someone. This it would open up. Um, <laughs> it was it was just wild. I that that was me in elementary school. That that was his fighting method. I I should mention he had projectiles. He could spit the acid, but then he also if he got into melee range, you know that was that was where the real horror began. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know where I got I that. Like, I don't know where I, I got that concept. I remember when I was like about five, I caught the scene in the thing where the spider, the man's head turns into a spider. And it for like forever traumatized me. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I think I, I, I grew up a bit, I'm not actually scared of spiders now, but when I grew up, I was terrified of spiders because of that one scene in the thing. Uh -huh. And it's, it, I, I think I'm over it now because I, I love the thing. I think it's one of the best movies. But oh, it's oh a great God. movie. It, it, it so, it, it completely traumatized me. This guy's head falling off and like spider is like popping. Uh -huh, yeah. Five I am. Um... I had a similar thing. Um, and by the way, I make no claims that that concept is like a good idea. It, it's me, it's elementary school me being an edgelord. Don't worry. I'm like, <laughs> it was definitely super edgy. Um, but no, I, I had a similar experience. There was like a movie called Killer Ants or something where, and I, I it was a really schlocky movie, um, but it terrified me when I was little and it gave me like a fear of ants. Uh, for a very long time. Uh, there was a scene where the ants, like, 
grabbed someone, and these are like pretty small ants, right? These are just small ants, but they're coordinated. They grab someone as he's still alive and pull him down into the ant hill. And it was like the visual was just like, oh god. Are you sure it wasn't like a scene from uh, uh, Crystal Skull you're thinking of? No. I, I swear, I swear, this is when I was, like, in elementary school. I'm, like, I'm having all these traumatizing memories from elementary school coming back. You're doing this to me. Oh, sorry, Fred. I feel like we should talk about, like, <laughs> Den Rabbit Hole behind the scenes. But it's know, kind right? of, like, the, the sort of story of making Den Rabbit Hole is kind of a bit dull in itself. And you've always said that. You've always said that making the... Making Dinner Rabbit Hole is probably the dullest production process of anything. Probably, uh, just from the outside, right? I love it. Um, I, I find it endlessly <laughs> fascinating. You know this, right? I find crazy yeah, yeah. things, and I'm like, holy shit, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, you got to hear this fact, and I'm like, what the, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you present them without context as well. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, like, what what does this relate to the story? <laughs> Or you, like, assume I've remembered something you said to me, like, a month ago. Yeah. Um, like, what? No. <laughs> but I, um, I, I feel like one of the things that can't be overstated enough is how much research goes into the show. Mm -hmm. It's the, I, I, it's, it, like it's the largest. It's the production cycle. It, it, it's, it's the majority of the production cycle, yeah. And it, it, you know, to be fair, you do find, I, I, you know, you constantly find things that aren't, you know, easily found. You know, you can't just Google some of the things you find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, can I share, like, this is probably the most ridiculous it's ever gotten. Um, but the way that my, my res because I have a research assistant this time because I need one because, um, a lot of the sources are in a language in which I am not super familiar or fluent. Um, so they... We're looking for a book. I think I explained this in another stream, uh, in yesterday's stream. For those who missed it, um, they found a bunch of sources that kept referencing this one book. And they were like, okay, I got to get my hands on this book, maybe. It might have something good in it. So they asked their local library, and the library said, we don't have it. Try, like, this other library in this major city. So they, they called this library, and they said, we don't have it. Try this college library. So they called the college library and they said, we don't have it, but let's check our records. Oh yeah, this other college that is right next to you has it, call them. So they called that library and they were like, oh yeah, the, the person who wrote this book is amazing. Um, and they were able to get it on interlibrary loan. It, it was just them desperately trying to hunt this down. I mean, that's as ridiculous as God. You've taken, you've taken books before to research. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's nothing you know, new. Getting an interlibrary loan was, you know, it's, it's tough work even finding, um, you know, getting, you know, even bothering to go to a library is kind of quite a unique uh, experience for a YouTuber, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I can't overstate it enough. It's like 75% of the production cycle is you researching stuff. Yeah, the, and like, the narration and the, and the video editing. The video editing is the easy part, frankly. Yeah. Music is, is fairly quick to put together. I tend to pride myself on being a very quick turnaround composer. Yes. Though I will admit I, I haven't uh, made any music today because it's my fucking birthday. It's your fucking birthday. Take yeah. the day off. And, like, it's at the point as well where, like, there's almost no way you're going to slow down production because, like, I still need to... Like, I still need to send you some of the narration. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. My focus no, no, no. has been horrendous this last... Like... Just since the quarantine started, frankly. It's 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 frustrating for everybody and you know, I think most people in the chat can appreciate that, you know? Yeah. Um Well but I, still. Uh, I this is probably the first day I've taken off in maybe years now. I'm just thinking about it. God uh, yeah. You it wasn't been... for your video. It was for Atrocity Guides video. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I... FYI, um Ryan made the music for Atrocity Guides newest video. I think I mentioned that yesterday too. Yeah. And, like, I, this is so ridiculous in retrospect, but I broke my arm in a yes. bicycle crash. Oh my god, and, and then you just kept working that same day. I was yeah, like, I, Ryan, I, I was mad at- I was actually legitimately mad at you. Take care of my friend, damn it. <laughs> and I was like, 
yeah, it was, it was bad. Because initially I didn't think I'd broken my arm. I, I thought I'd just fucked my arm up badly. And I was going to sit in the road and I was like, okay, this is embarrassing sitting in the road. I'm going to go cycle into the office and I'm going to write music. And I sat it for two hours and I was like, you know what? My arm's going to get really, really painful now. And I was like, I can't cycle home. We've got to take the metro home. And I got on the metro and I was like, okay, feeling like I'm going to pass out here. And, yeah. and then I, I went to the hospital. They gave me like extremely strong painkillers and like this these drugs to stop the inflammation, which I could only take for three days, it would kill me. And then I went home and kept working on it. Uh, <laughs> Ryan. But you know, it's, it's, it's what I do, it's my, it's the sort of light in my life is writing music, you know? Yeah, I, I know. It's, I don't know. I guess, I guess I'm the same way with down the rabbit hole. It's like, things are going to shit. It's like, well, I'm, I'm just working. <laughs> We, you know, I have. I feel like I have so much to do, and um, you do. You like, keep your not, plate not so very like, full. Well, it's not so much. Um, I have so much to do. You know, I have deadlines coming up. It's I have so much I want to make. Mm. Um, and I have to go all out to have time to make the things I want to make and to make the things I have to make. Right. My living. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of a balance, right? The. The problem that I've always had is whenever I want to work on some, th some other project, I'm like, oh, but I could be putting that time into down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Always. That, that, that's the eternal struggle. But I, th I think I'd like to see you do different projects. And it's nice to see you doing, you know, more unusual things. Now. Yeah. I mean, like the quarantine streams, it's... It's easy, right? Uh, the Warrens has also been like something, you know, we sit down, we do a little bit of research, we sit down and record, and it's comparatively low effort. Um, and, it's, and more so than low effort, because um, it's, I'm, I'm, it's probably still just medium effort in the grand scheme of things. I don't know, but it, it's low time commitment. That's the really big thing. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. You know, making your own things quite tough and i think one of the most difficult parts is is being able to kind of reflect positively positively on what you've done mm -hmm. and sort of feel you you've made you know a real achievement um because that you know you have 90 days of work and then one day you're feeling great and then you're back at it right mm. also talents thank you for the happy birthday Ah, <laughs> I saw the super chat. I, I I've been meaning to that for a little while. I, I missed the question though. It must be why. Oh, I can scroll up and check. No, no, it's fine. Let's okay, keep okay. Yeah, um, we're, we're gonna check out the super chats at the end anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Fred, over to you. Oh, shit! I I I'm like thinking about making another cup. I. Okay, good. The the tea is so astringent that it's like, hmm, I might need a minute before I make another cup. Um, although I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the fact that this this little steeper kind of ruined it. <laughs> I need. I was worried that that was going to happen, but I figured it wasn't going to be nearly as big of a problem as it ended up being. Yeah. Oh. Um, I feel like I didn't do a good job plugging how good a trusty guide is. I, I I mentioned a trusty guide, and then I wasn't like, oh, by the way, a trusty guide is absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, she, she's fantastic. One of fantastic. the best series I've, on the internet. Oh yeah, I've I've mentioned multiple times on these streams already. It's like, wow, Atrocity Guy is really, really yeah, good. Yeah, everybody, it's been mentioned every stream, but everybody should go um, see Atrocity Guy's new video. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Like she's it's, upped her game yeah. so much. Yeah, uh, I I'm I you know I'm so impressed. I'm so proud mm. to be involved in it. Yeah, um, it, it was it was cool. Um, it's been cool giving her feedback and sort of helping her grow, too. Yeah. And yes, someone in chat said, I need a guy Wan. I know. Trust me. Actually, if anyone knows where to get a guy Wan, please let me know somehow <laughs> if there's a good place to get a decent guy Wan. It doesn't have to be like the best thing ever or super fancy. I just, a guy Wan. Uh, let's see, what am I going to do with these leaves? Because I've been, I've just been using the same leaves. I think I'm just gonna dump them in here. 
Oh god, is that even going to work? Wow, it made made like a pancake of tea leaves. This isn't good. Okay, <laughs> this is whatever. Just saying that somebody's you remind somebody of Niles Crane, and that's really that. <laughs> that's really spot on. <laughs> oh god damn it! No, it's not going in there. God damn it! <laughs> I'll figure out something with this. Here, you know what? There's a hole. Goodbye. I'll deal with you later. That's the great thing about... No, that, that's the best thing about these tea trays is, like, you dump the leaves, you dump the tea, and, like, you just dump it out later. It's fantastic. Here we go. Not a big See deal. See Arkaxon in the chat. Eat them. Eat them. Eat them. Who, 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 who made my website? I yes. Say. Yeah, I did. Argaxon, uh, for those of you who don't know, I mentioned it before. And the, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> jeans. That's why we use jeans, friends. No, um, Argaxon, um, has been making graphic design for Down the Rabbit Hole for quite a long time now. When did they start? I, I think they started with the, um, what was it? The Final Fantasy House video? Because that came... Yeah, that came before the Furries video. Correct? Yes. Okay. I think one of the things people don't realize is, like... When you make something, like a music or a documentary or something, it's really easy to forget, like, details of it that other people might remember. Like, people are like, oh, I really like that track you did for Frederick. And I was like, I don't... Did I do that track? That <laughs> I, I, I get it all the time. Like, I find people who know more about my music than me. It's a really I, strange experience. See, like, I... My experience with Down the Rabbit Hole is very different, where someone might bring up a topic and be like, oh, man, that thing that happened in that was crazy. And then my response will be, I know. And then I start going into, like, even more deeper detail <laughs> that I didn't include in the video. Um, just because I have a memory for it, and I spend so much time with these topics. Maybe I'm a bit more kind of... Uh... What's the word? Discombobulated compared to you. I, well, well, I mean, it's, I think it's kind of comparing apples to oranges at this point, right? I feel like uh, with your creative works, they're more abstract. And so um, it's easier to sort of lose track of them. I mean, that's a fair comment. Music, music is an abstract, pretty abstract medium. It's not yes. entirely abstract, but it's pretty abstract. Medium. It is, yes. It's what people would have called a plastic uh, art before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I though I will say that there are times, uh, there was a time recently where someone was like, hey, I remember this story that you sent me all these years back, and I'm like, that you know, they're giving me plot points, and I'm like, I don't remember this at all. Well, that I, was the first stream, Fred. <laughs> yeah, that was the first stream. Yeah. Someone brought that up, and I'm like, I, I have literally no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, maybe it, it was, was kind of trippy, your, actually. Maybe it was your Planet Side 2 stream recently. Was that the oh, one? Shit. Yeah, yeah, Seriously, that's right. Seriously, I can't remember. This is the problem. No, that was it. It, it was the Planet Side 2 stream where... Um... Oh, whoopsie-daisy. I need to actually, like, heat the water up properly. This is kind of interesting. I have another jug of tea. Or, not tea. Water. So I'm going to add the extra water to cool the water down so then I can heat it up. To where I need it to be. Okay, perfect. I'm really conscious my chair might be really creaky. I don't know if it's sounding. No, you. Uh, it's fine. Thing. Okay, because in here it sounds like Fangorn Forest or something. It's just creaking noises coming from <laughs> my I'm just making sure that the music doesn't drown you out. I think we're good. What piece is it? Um, it's. This one is Jelly Owl Morton. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how bad the titles are. <laughs> I, I know, right? They're all, they're all just owl they're puns. They're all terrible. All of them. Yeah. I see them and yeah. I'm like, oh, God. And and all the Atrocity Go ones are terrible puns. Are they? Hold on. Oh, I'm going to go I, look I, right I, now. I'm looking right now. I'm going to read them out to you all. So, for reference, Atrocity, no, Guys video, Atrocity Guide's video is about the new um what was it the wave of superheroes that were yeah, patrolling the streets yeah. yeah specifically about phoenix jones there's a lot of fire puns yes um so there's unmasked there's 
the people's villain. There's these are more serious titles. Yeah, there's Trailblazer, <laughs> Smolder of Justice, Senseless. Like a lot of see, these all are a lot more dignified than like but most of the, the titles you Phoenix give Jones me. Phoenix Jones one. The Phoenix Jones episode is is kind of quite serious. It is. You, you, know, you, you... It, there's a lot of there's a lot of very bad things that happened in that in that story. It's a bit like Tempo. Some of the Tempo S. Yes, I was about to say. Titles. Yep, I was about to say the exact same thing. The Temple OS um, music tracks are titled a little bit more, a um, little bit more yeah, straight based. I, the, just from even from a personal point of view, it's a very sad story, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make, you know, fun at the serious moments, you know. Right. You know, those those are, you know, like I said, the story of uh, the Temple OS story kind of, I, I said it has three kind of parts. Right. It has, you know, the curiosity, then the darkness, then the tragedy. Yes. And um, I think the tragic part, I can't let myself have fun with. You know, it's got to be mm. serious. Oh. It's got to be straight. This this smells better. Okay. I think I, I think I got it right this time. The basket was the way to go. I've learned this day. Uh, what I Again, what I really need is a guy one. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, my favorite question in the chat says, who is Felix Jones? <laughs> i i appreciate that a lot actually the, I, I the, the sort of like innocence that. by the way now that i've brewed this tea correctly it is delicious oh my goodness i'm on my second beer i've, I've had two belgian beers um, mm. I had a triple oh oh my god oh this is like I, I wasn't wild because i screwed it up before but this is excellent ichigo trading and travel company their ayumi high grade sencha this is Fantastic. Yeah, th this is this is good sencha. I I'm drinking it. I had a triple camelette. Is that correct pronunciation? I used to live with somebody from Belgium, so I'm really, really paranoid about my um, pronunciation of Belgian words. Mm. And then I had a. I can't say that. Never mind. The. Okay. But yeah, you know, good good birthday beers. I'm having a nice birthday, and I couldn't think of anything better on my birthday than to spend it with you, Frederick. Oh, yeah. Ryan. Ryan, Ryan right. me to go to 99%. Go ahead, Fred. I like so. So this is actually something I struggle with, right? Because <laughs> you're you're such a sweetheart most of the time, and like, but you're you're also very sarcastic. And so sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you'll tease me about something, and I'll be like, "Oh no!" And I'll, I'll be really worried that like I bothered you or I said something wrong. And you'll every time you have to clarify because my, <laughs> and I always feel so embarrassed every time. You know, it's just it's it's the human experience, Frederick. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm I'm not a particularly angry person, and so no, no, you're not. not neither am I. I like I, I got angry at you for not taking care of yourself. It's like treat my friend well. Be nice to my friend. Yeah, <laughs> you mean me? <laughs> yes, yes. You you are the friend. Yeah, I I was um, reflecting because um, you obviously met me and my fiance Han and we. I was like, that was a, I, we we met and we went to this museum and I was like, man, that was a really good day, wasn't it? Wasn't it a great day, Han? And she was like, Ryan, we spent the whole day looking at rocks in the museum. I was like, well, they were good really rocks, good. though. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, some of, some of those rocks were from my hometown, like within a hundred miles of my hometown. No, same for me. I, I was like, not, not my hometown, but I just like I recognize the names and I'm like, wait a minute. It's like, <laughs> you were it's like, like there's a rock here from Portland. <laughs> <laughs> or like there there was a rock. Um, yeah, I, I saw Portland. I saw like Seattle. I'm Pacific Northwest, um, so like. Seattle, I think uh, the Rogue River was the one that set me off, actually. That was the one where I was like, wait a minute. The Rogue River, you know, because like the Rogue River is a big name sort of in the Pacific Northwest with like, like I, I've paddled the Rogue River before in a kayak. I love kayaking, just by the way. Kayaking is like the absolute I, I, perfect. I enjoy it, man. Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Well, while, while we wait for him to come back, it's it's sort of a balance between sweet and savory. I'd say it was so like the bitterness from the first steep is still on my tongue, so it's a little rough. It's 
Did you did you lose me then, Fred? I did. Yes, I, I'm descri oh, I described the Centra in your absence. Yeah, countryside internet is not good. Yeah, <laughs> no, I got you. They they use a lot of just like massive Wi-Fi. They don't actually run cables out to the houses out there, do they? It's no, it's 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 we've got a wire, but it's it's wire. It's not fiber optic. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> you know, it's like 1940s technology running around. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had, I had fucking dial-up for so many years, it, it, it pains me to this day. Um, I, I still remember those sounds. That's sampled for this, the Temple OS episode. Yes, you did use it in there. That was, it was a really good creative option. I remember. No, you, it's did, not, it's terrible. Say, I, no, didn't you I, say that you, were, it's terrible. that you, ahead, you were, you were saying like, you really wanted an opportunity to use that sound in something. Yeah, but it's stupid because Temple OS never had any connectivity. Like, I realized this afterwards. Yeah, I, but he was still using the internet co to connect with everyone, right? Oh, come on. That's... Because I, I, I wanted to use it because I saw Temple OS and I was like, well, this is really 90s. And, um, you know, I, I when I think of 90s computing, I think of the dial-up sound. And I was like, I'm going to use the dial-up sound. It's, it's in the Night Vision. I remember the, the title. Mm-hmm. Um, it's used in night vision, which is like a 14 minute track. I want to say it's probably shorter than that. It was long. It's a whole sec It was like a big section of the whole episode. Yeah, like the whole middle section of the episode is one track, which uses mm. the uh, that episode with the shepherd tone. Yeah, shepherd tone. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that that was what got it, you copyright claimed. Well, I did. Yeah, but like for about five seconds before, I was like, you can't copyright claim a shepherd tone. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they, they accepted it and they just dropped the copyright claim. I think it was an automatic thing and the people were like, yeah, for well, fucking... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. um, Yeah, aut automatic claims are very aggressive a lot of the time for music. I get my own music claimed from from, from me. Yeah, that... Um... And this... No, I yeah, get that. And it was, it was, it was claimed... It was, so it's claimed for myself. It's like Ryan Probert has claimed your video. Because um, <laughs> some of my... Some of my music is released through like labels and mm -hmm. they will automatically do it you know mm -hmm. i don't do it with like i would never do it with your music because it would absolutely fuck your videos yeah, yeah. but um it it it's done for it's done automatically in some of my cds and when i want to put a trailer online because people are like oh man i really wish i could buy some of your music and i was like check out this trailer it's blocked immediately oh. by the record you know the record label right um, that that's actually something that some music producers have had to do. They've had to like in order to make sure that they're okay, um, they upload like the track that they use in their video. They upload separately on a different channel and then use that second channel to copyright claim their own video Ooh. to beat the system. It's just, it's a nightmare. Just... It's a, it's a complete nightmare. It is. It is. It's, it's YouTube is a nightmare. It's the automated world, you know. It's uh, mm -hmm. so infuriating. Yes. Oh, I forgot to tell you the best. I'm just thinking about this. The best part of the um, teapot story. So yes. originally, I wasn't going to bring the teapot to you. I was going to post it. Okay. And I was in Shanghai at this point, and I went to the local post station in Shanghai, and there's something called they call it a steel bowl job. I don't know if they call it in all of Asia, but they call it in China and Taiwan. That steel sounds bowl sexual. No, a steel steel bowl. So it's like yeah, I, you, I, I know steel bowl. Food. I know I heard you correctly, steel bowl. But the the job no at bowl the end. bowl like a, a bowl you eat out of. Yes, a bowl. Yeah, I know. I know what okay, you're talking it about. It sounds like you're saying bowl. Um, I, I I know I'm I, I'm a bit West Country. Bowl, I'm a bit, bowl. I'm a bit rhotic. Yeah. So my bowl. English is not very good. Bowl clear. here a, a right. steel bowl. There you go. Fred, we're getting, we're getting bogged down here. Right? Okay. <laughs> so um, they say they have a steel ball job. And it's like the idea that if they, because their job is so secure, their, their ball they eat at will never break. Uh -huh. So if you drop your ball, it'll break. If it's a steel ball, it won't break. Right, yes. And so these people like don't give a shit. Do you know what I mean? Because they've had their job for 30 years. They're sick of working in the post office, but they're never going to get fired. Right. And like, I, I go in, into this um, waiting room and like the post office in China is kind of weird because there's a lot of like I think social security stuff is done in there as well 
and there's like a huge queue for this one desk and then there's the post desk which is really there's no queue at all i go up and the state of this guy like he if you try to make yourself look as scruffy as possible you wouldn't look as scruffy as this guy his <laughs> tie was undone his hair was a mess his like four of his buttons were undone and his jacket was ripped and i go up to this guy and help like the whoops the the buttons on this coat jacket whatever are done and you can't even see them yeah <laughs> but this okay so i go and i pop the package down and he looks at it and he goes where you want to send this i go america and he goes he just like shakes his head you can't see me shaking my head he just mm -mm. shakes his head and he goes trade war they'll break this and he said oh. when they sell the packet send the packages to america they jump on them and what? i was like they jump on them before they get sent what that's amazing they, they, they specifically man like mishandle packages going from china to america and he was like i was like what should i do he goes you can take it to ups <laughs> 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 or you know FedEx or something, and I was like, I looked at my phone. It's like the nearest FedEx miles, uh, FedEx office was like four miles away, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. I just went home. Right. But, you know, customer service ex experience in Shanghai is quite something. Mm hmm. Oh, someone's saying YouTube's copyright system isn't broken. The world's is. Yeah, I agree. Copyright is absurd at this point. I'm I'm very frustrated by it. Uh, but that that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted my opinion out there. Opinions. No, and then <laughs> you, um, yeah, you handed it to me uh, when I saw you in person uh, over Christmas. And I remember there was nowhere in my bags to, like, I, I had to make some decisions, right? Because I desperately had to stuff things in. Oh, God, getting, getting back was a nightmare. I, I can't even begin. Oh, I'm, um, I'm so sorry for. Oh yeah, you did mention it when you got back. Yeah. I mentioned it. Yeah, I'm, I I, so I made sorry. my flight with literal like, because I came in overseas and they had one dude getting most of the people through the line. There were so many people that missed their flights. I I can't even begin. Um, and this was well before the quarantine, by the way. Um, yeah. Well, well before. Of course. Um, this was even before news broke in China. Yes. I think yeah. um, people became aware there might be something going on in Wuhan in about late December, like very late December. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese government were kind of denying it at that point. Oh, yeah, because that's BBC what they do. Like, the BBC were like, there must be like 60 cases of this disease because there are four people abroad with it. Mm -hmm. And um, so it wasn't like a big deal then. Do you know what I mean? Right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, um, yeah, it, I, I appreciate that experience, Frederick. It was, I, yeah, it's, no, I, I'm, I'm sure you've experienced similar, like uh, American customs take, uh, they just took forever. And so I made my flight with a few minutes to spare, but for, for that whole trip home, um, I, I, I recognized that I, I couldn't fit it into my carry on bags, um, uh, and then I also checked a bag, and I was really worried about that. There was no way that I was putting the this the poison pot in um <laughs> in my checked bag. So what I did was the whole trip home, I wrapped it up and I put it in my kangaroo pouch in my hoodie. I carried the whole thing oh. personally all the way. I like I cradled the thing the like whole a little like Joey twenty hour little yeah yeah a, a little bit the whole like what twenty hour trip back home. Believe it or not, I've never had any trouble with customs in my life. Um, maybe it's just, maybe if I go to America, I will. Um, I never really had any trouble with immigration. Even going into China, I never had trouble with immigration. They just stamped me and sent me through. Uh-huh. You know, I think they steal bowl jobs. They don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. Uh, it's been, you've been here for about an hour. And like I, yeah. I know, th I I'm trying, I'm desperately trying to keep the streams at a moderate length. They just keep going long. We can keep going, Frederick. I'm, we can I'm keep happy. going. I, I've got, I've got more beer. Well, I mean, like <laughs> I could sit down and chat with you for forever, like you know yeah. that. Yeah. That was I fantastic. Think, now, I feel now? like you're quite unique. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You first. 
I feel like you're quite an interesting person to work with because you have such a broad range of knowledge. It's you know, you, I, I have an eclectic music. range. I'll put it that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like uh, that makes the experience of working with you particularly stimulating. Ah, I'm I'm so glad. I feel I feel so boring most of the time because my interests <laughs> my interests are so mundane, right? I play the hurdy gurdy. I I like making tea. Oh, don't you I dare play... say that's mundane. How dare you? <laughs> I, I I make dry documentaries you now for a living. That's that, that is such a you, you can't even you you fuck you Fred you you must <laughs> you're doing such a disservice to yourself and you know you're doing a disservice to yourself no I, I don't shut know. up I, I, <laughs> I've just I've just had a lot of really weird I really value unique experiences yeah that's but but at the same time I also like a quiet life that's just I'll. I like a quiet life most of the time, and then very suddenly I'll do something very out there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'll 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 spend a month uh, going on a road trip in a van again in the middle of summer, uh, in, and the van again has no AC. That was a yeah. nightmare. That's a whole story. <laughs> um, I, I'm probably gonna chat with uh, regular car reviews. He's gonna be here, by the way, on one of the later quarantine streams. But like, I actually I don't know regular car reviews. I I have I I I I've never heard that. I never seen their stuff. Sorry, Fred. Oh, he he's I, fantastic. I feel, um, I feel guilty. No, you're you're fine. Um, he does a lot of he does reviews of regular cars, and he's a profoundly funny person and a very interesting person to talk to. I I chat with him a lot. It's a good time. He he's he's a he's a really sweet guy. Yeah. I I have nothing but good things to say about Brian. <laughs> Almost the same thing as me. Now might be a good time to answer questions, like about down the rabbit hole. And like usually, yeah, I, keep, can... I keep answering questions after, but you're like kind of the most active other person on down the rabbit hole, like uh, in terms of so, production. Sorry, Ark Axon. Be great. <laughs> Our Ark Axon, you no, know, he like he's great, and he he understands the aesthetic of the show quite well. Yeah, um, he's really absolutely. Good. Um, you know, he he was a viewer of the show long before he was making graphics for it. But, As was I. Yeah, and you you too. You approached me originally, yeah. and you remember my trepidation. You was yeah. I'm still salty about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was scared because I was talking with Jake about this in the first one. You remember that, right? Yeah, yeah was, of course. I was. Yeah, I was saying I'm I'm scared. You know, because my name is the is top billing, and so I'm responsible for all of this. That's just the nature of being a leader, right? You know, you take, re you share success, you solely take responsibility for, like, anything negative. So I'm, like, really spook, like, it, it was spooky. And also, like, I just wasn't as familiar with you. I, I didn't know you yeah. at that point. And obviously that's changed. We're, you're, you're a good friend now. But Yeah, and, you know, like, it was kind of weird because, like, I, I contacted you because I had this, like, I, it wasn't a regular job. I had a creative job, but yes. I was... I sort of, I was in a weird country and I had no time to make my um, own music, you know? Mm. And I was like, I need some kind of outlet to make music here. And I was like, I and originally, I, the first people I got in contact with to do music for was OSW Review. Yes. Because um, they were like such a cool group of people. And I was like, and I got in contact with a guy and he was like, wow, that's really cool. Let's just, let's fucking do some music. And um then I was like watching your stuff and I was like, well, this guy's using Kevin McLeod. The... <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was like, maybe maybe I can do something. And mm. that's what I did. And it, it worked out beautifully. Yeah. I mean, it's a, I feel like I, I've mentioned this a lot before, but I feel like you making music for Down the Rabbit Hole is part of what elevated it. Because I feel like my work is much greater than it used to be i know that people like the old topics right and those topics can be very interesting but i feel a lot more proud of what i've made over the last like year year and a half right i've and part of what's made it better is your music and it, instead of having to pick from a more limited supply you're making music that specifically fits uh what i'm going for and it works so well well I'm Mm. 
people in the chat well, are just, wondering just... the rumor the rumor come out does frederick newton is gay <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know <laughs> <laughs> No, I. It, no, I, your your music is really what I feel is one of the things that has made, um, down the rabbit hole into something that I'm more proud of now. I think it's one of those things where you work with other people on something, and you can't help but feel proud of what you've done, because you're so proud of the people you work with. Absolutely, that's you. you kind of it, it's a way to force yourself into being proud of something that you make. Because I'm never. I'm never super proud of anything I make. I'm just like, okay, I've gotten better. Now, he, what can I improve? Like, I cannot tell you how many times I have watched over my old videos looking for things to fix. Like, I have spent a lot of time watching my videos and being like, okay, that works. I really like that. I'm going to make sure that I keep, you know, doing things in this particular way, but this didn't work. And I keep getting more and more granular um, until we're where I'm at now. I feel, um, you know, maybe we have slightly different ways we feel about what we do. Because I'm, I'm always kind of, uh, because music's, music's kind of more collaborative. But the music I make for, not for down the rabbit hole, but for, well, also for down the rabbit hole, but for my myself is more yes. collaborative. Does that make sense? Yes. I work with a lot of musicians. J just music. by nature, by nature of composition itself, it is collaborative. Yeah. And um, it's not as it's not like film though. It's not restricting in terms of a budget so much as that. But you need people to work with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so most of the time, if I've done a, a good piece, I sort of beam with pride because I'm so proud of the people who have realised it. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's it's a good approach. It's, all, it's a all very the, all wholesome. the bitterness and anger seeped out of me here, Fred. We're being really wholesome. I <laughs> you got it out. Early. Mention mention something that makes me angry, and we'll get into that. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Well, now, now, now that we've we well, could mention Kevin McLeod. Of... <laughs> huh? You can mention Kevin McLeod. It was mainly, <laughs> it, I was mainly pissed off about Kevin. People saying Kevin McLeod to me because it was like, um, no, it wasn't. It was Spyglass. People would always Spyglass. ask me if I'd written Spyglass, and I was uh -huh. just like, ah, <laughs> I gotta explain who Kevin McLeod is now. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, over that. It's a, it's a joy mm -hmm. <laughs> to be asked about the Den Rabbit Hole music more these days. Yeah, I. And by the way, um, I, I want to throw this out here. I'm going to mention it again later. But um, if you're interested, uh, Ryan's offering music lessons. You still have slots open, right? I they're... have a few slots there. Yeah, they're they've they've filled up really quick. They're just a few. They they've gone very heartlingly quickly. Yeah, they they you had you had quite a few slots, and like I, I expected yeah. them to go quick, but like they've really filled up fast. So like if you're interested in like upping your composition game if you want to learn more about music theory and composition um right like talk to ryan go to twitter you know what hold on a second i'm going to go to your twitter real quick probably there you are really embarrassing um hey there are the balloons hat hat burf yeah thank here. you there's his twitter dm him you have your dms open right Yep. Yeah, yeah. DM him and ask him about the music lessons. Because you're also doing trial lessons um, in yep. case people want to try it out. Uh, but get in there, like, soon. Because even without me mentioning them, they've been going really fast. Yeah, I do teach microtonality. I'm I'm famous for my use of microtonality. In fact, the Atrocity Guy video does use microtonality. I, I um, love it. It's, it's it's the um it's the uh senseless part of the atrocity guy soundtrack is microtonal actually mm -hmm. and you can probably tell when you listen to it uh-huh uh-huh it's i i feel like that's something that just is has not been explored a ton in western music just you know based on so much of the tradition is <laughs> that, is that just me here. Um, it's because microtonal music is kind of okay so there's lots of different kinds of microtonal music um if you're talking Western classical music, but like 
Um, All the way from Syria. Hello. It's so. It's I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's just so cool to me to hear people from all over the world watching my videos. It's so cool. <laughs> Continue. It's 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 beautiful, isn't it? It's it really is. wonderful. And that's actually one of the most wonderful things about these lessons I've been doing is I meet people from all. Um, people from all over the world get in touch with me and say, "Look, can we do an online lesson?" It's, yeah. It's really fascinating. Um, microtonality. Uh. Yeah, so it's like spectral music, which is very complicated to play and very... I think the biggest problem with microtonal music is it's hard to perform. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I get you, it. Because you're so used to not playing microtonal music. So playing microtonal music is pretty, particularly challenging. Yeah. And also bear in mind, like, people's kind of consciousness of music, it, particularly experimental music, takes about 40 years to catch up, if not yeah. more. Like... You know, um, you st I started, I heard a really, I'm not going to say where it was from, but I heard a really obvious ripoff of the music for from Koyana Skatsi <laughs> by Philip Glass, which is <laughs> it's quite iconic. I mean, it was, it was parodied by The Simpsons, wasn't it? In the uh, the Barney Rubble movie. Do you remember he made that like art movie about yes, his yes. alcohol? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and then the, then the prize was a lifetime supply of Duff beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I mean, I mean, <laughs> just. I'm a huge Simpsons fan. I think you are too, Fred. I, I'm not a huge fan. I just grew up with a lot of, like, oh, the okay. good Simpsons, right? Yeah, I obviously. And I, I, I'm a huge fan of it. But there, there is a Korean Scott team. Parody. Oh, oh, but, oh, oh. Um, one thing ahead. that I... Um, in the new video, um, The Simpsons has a reference to the subject of the new video. Uh, uh, we can't yeah. say. We, we can't say what it is. It's I, I didn't mention it in the video uh, itself, but I do kind of want to, like... It'll be at the very least in the Q&A, because the Q&A for the next video is also going to be a, like, here's some more absurd facts from this topic that we couldn't fit in. Um, but, like, even The Simpsons referenced the topic, but, like, nobody knows anymore, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to your mistakes video where you can talk about all the times you misused my music by accident. Like, <laughs> like, the, like I did a special version of... Maybe it was beaking around. Yeah, I... you used the wrong version of it. I was like, Fred, I worked like two hours on that. I know. I was, I was so embarrassed. I feel, like, I, I feel like I, I've treated you like shit a lot. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's just funny. Like, um, a trusty guy did it too, actually. Oh, really? Like, so you remember there's like a keyboard solo in a trusty guy? Yes. Um, and it's like one of the. It's I, I'm so pleased. People, there's a guy who commented like. Who was ever playing the keys at this moment is absolutely killing it. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is awesome. Yeah, it's, oh, that must feel you, good. If you watch that, I'm I'm so sorry, atrocity. Um, if you watch that, um, there's like percussion sounds that sync up with the movement, but it's uh. like half a second out of time. No. Obviously, she's gone back and she's changed a word, so it doesn't mm. fit the video. The video doesn't fit completely together anymore. Right. Um, and I have done that to you, and I, I, um, I think part of what happened was, um, you would have too much time at the intro, and I should have approached you about it, but I think, like, you were really, really busy, and I, I didn't want to bother you, so I just kind of messed with it in post. There was, um, um, yeah, Hurdy Gurdy, you cut half a piece. I, I was really yeah. salty about it because I was like, Fred, that piece, it like, it does this thing. It, it changes yeah, I... and it makes sense. And you were like, uh, but I, I was, I, I need to cut some of the lines. I was like, I made that video of you showing how easy it is to change the tempo on a logic yes. file. Yes. I was just like, and I was like, had oh, the no. tempo, like a uh, slider going up and down, like crazy. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, Oh man, it, it's been it's been hard learning how to work with another person because like I never want to inconvenience you, right? And part of it it's was fine, also at, th at that fine. point I wasn't even. Part of it was that I wasn't even paying you at that point. Like you were making music for me gratis for a little while, and now yeah. I'm now I'm actually paying you for it. <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't want to mention that part, but um, I don't know. Like I thought you might be sensitive. Well. It, it was just because you know I was doing it for fun, right? Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I had. You know, more than enough money from my boring job in you know Beijing. I think it was, I think I first worked with you when I was in Beijing, mm. and then I moved and I was in Shanghai, and um, then 
I was making enough money from my boring job, and I just wanted something fun to do. Right, yeah. A real job. Um, so, you know, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. no, it but it's worked out nicely. Yeah, I, I, I'm really glad that, um, that I've got you on board. I feel, I feel less guilty taking up your time now that I'm paying you too. Definitely, right. you shouldn't have felt guilty anyway, because you know I was always about making the best episode possible. You know. Yeah, I, I recognize that, but I also like I also recognize that you you work yourself to the bone, and yeah. I really didn't want to add even more to that. I also was really self conscious about release times around that period too, because my release times were taking longer and longer as research was taking more and more time. Because by the way. The thing that's increased the release, um, increased the time between videos has only been research. That's the one thing that has made the videos take longer. Um, except, well, I guess the video editing, I've gotten more precise with that, um, yeah. and more purposeful with it. But like a lot that I do is, is very purposeful that people don't even recognize or, or notice really. Um, it's, it's it's interesting that people are willing to give me that time, and I'm really happy that people are willing to give me that time to research. But yeah, that that's where the research comes from, or that that's where the time in between videos comes from. And you know, it's worth it, Fred, because that's what the if there's oh shit, I'm gonna say USP. If there's a USP for your show, <laughs> it's the research. You know, mm -hmm. that's what makes the difference because there's so yeah. many like videos out there which are like. You might as well read Wikipedia. Do you know what I mean? I know some of these things that have Wikipedia. Right, yeah. And that that's actually uh, something that I kind of notice with a lot of uh, stuff on YouTube is that um, a lot of the informational videos are just kind of reading the Wikipedia article. I think I, I like <laughs> Sam Onella's videos, but he's probably the worst perpetrator of that. Because um, he, he's very entertaining, but he's not really going much deeper than just what he found on Wikipedia. and And that's fine. You know, he... I, I'm there to be entertained, not to be informed as much, but that's yeah. not the angle that I'm going for. Um, and I, like my, I have the ability to do the research, right? That's that's sort of my edge. It's my X factor. Yeah. There was a comment earlier about the most difficult episode of Down a Rabbit Hole to make what would, for both of us. What was what was yours? Oh. Hmm. That's a good question. You know what? I'm going to open up my channel real quick and I'm going to look. <laughs> I, I, I want to make sure I, that I, I'm giving the right one. I I know one and I, I it was it was a tough one. I have a tough one. In Maybe you'll say, I'm curious what you say for that. The hardest video. Hmm. It's going to be a newer one for sure. Just yeah. because I, I put more time into them. If you're talking about overall, it's probably the most recent one. Oh, like, really? uh, not, not the most recent one, uh, the one that's coming out really soon. Oh, okay. Um, the one that I keep alluding to but can't spoil yet. Um, that th This one has probably been the most difficult to research. Uh, but beyond that, probably the Temple OS episode, just because I had to dig through so many live streams and so much video. I, 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 for me, the hurdy gurdy was quite a tough one. Yeah, because yeah, you really labored over that. Like you were using different intervals for the yeah. notes. You, you you broke out of um, not just is it just intonation where it's um, yeah it, uh, shit. What is it? Pythagorean, but I think it's the same thing, isn't it? I think I, so. I'm I, I'm actually not. So I do write microtonal music, but I'm not. A big temperament kind of person there's lots of people who are very obsessed with temperament mm -hmm. and that's just not for me so like um my microtonal music is kind of weird because it's purposely doesn't make sense i, I make like weird microtonal sounds and i use them in pieces All so that if you listen to I ever see is nuclear fusion have you ever heard have, have you no, ever no. heard um flying microtonal banana i think that's what the album's called Oh no! <laughs> it's um. Oh, it, it it's great. Hold on. You know what? 
But you know, for, I, I don't really have time to listen to other people's music. I'm <laughs> yeah. my own music. King Gizzard and the <laughs> Lizard Wizard is so much fun, though. I think you'd appreciate it. it it's, it's, I, I know, I'm going to keep suggesting music and nobody's going to have time to listen to it. But <laughs> Nuclear Fusion is a freaking amazing song. Anyway, that's that was where I kind of realized, like, hey, wait a minute, microtonality at the forefront is potentially good. Yeah, it just depends how it's used. I mean, like I said, I, I'm not particularly you know, strict with it. And I, I just make weird sounds, microtonality, and I just stick them in my pieces, you know? Right. And they haven't been in a, down a rabbit hole episode yet, but they have been in a trusty. Mm, mm -hmm. We'll see if I use them in this episode. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to find out. <laughs> I don't know how dark this episode gets yet. Wait, you you haven't read the script yet? No, I have read the script, but I don't okay. know how dark the tone will be. It oh, the tone. The right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's... Because it kind of evolves as you make it, right? I was going to say, like, you've read the script. I'm, like, 100% sure you've read the script. I just kind of... Okay. Um, no, and you've been there, as I've been sort of telling you, as things have gone on. But it's all been kind of without context. <laughs> I'll just, oh, like, message right, you. It's like, Ryan... Th this fact is so absurd. There are people uh, talking about A equals 4, 3, 2 in the chat. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> what have I right. done? <laughs> there's, I there's a, there's a uh, A equals 4, 3, 2 conspiracy. Theory. Yeah, I, I know about that conspiracy theory. It's so good. I sent it to you. It's yeah, like, you sent it. Yeah, you, you're the one who introduced me to it. The article. I remember like, now. It was a long time ago, but I remember. There's like pictures of cells like under 440 and under 432. Right. And they're like, look at this cell. It's all fucked up. And like falling a bit, falling, falling apart under 440. A, A equals 440. And then it's like, but 432, look at this cell. This cell's happy. I'm yeah, like, it's so good. This? <laughs> there were a few it. like music rabbit holes i have um that i've covered mm -hmm. um i think they they more warrant oh i've been on top episode. chat not live chat oh no wonder sorry i'm like i feel like chat's been slow it's like oh that's why i'm a dweeb <laughs> it's true yeah, i mean that is true just in general but you're the, you're the best dweeb Ah. Shucks. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening again. All right, now I, I think now might be a good time to open the floor to questions. Yeah, Without, like, down the yes, rabbit hole. Definitely. Thought Frederick was going to read the, the Quran. Is it spelled Q-U-A-R-A-N sometimes? Because I've only ever seen it spelled Q-U-R-A-N or Q-U apostrophe R-A-N. Did Ryan write the ba -da -da in the intro of some of the Down the Rabbit Holes? You mean all of them? And no, but he did make it his own for, um, for like, from now on. God, it was like pulling teeth trying to get me I to know. use your Jesus version. I, I talked about that uh, before. Yeah, you mentioned it to Jake. Multi-day arguments. Yes, it, it went on forever until I eventually was like, yeah, you're right. I was scared. Oh my god. I'm so scared. Like, I don't know what I... I didn't ever expect Down the Rabbit Hole to get this big. Mm-hmm. Have Wednesday. you ever told the real story behind Down the Rabbit Hole? Or is that a secret? No, it's not a secret. Um, I've told the story before. I don't know if I told it on stream. I... No, I have not told it on quarantine yet. Uh, do you, do you guys want to hear the original story of how Down the Rabbit Hole happened? Because this was news to me, like, three months ago. Okay. Seeing it spelled Quran or Kor- Yeah, with a K. Yeah, Q or K. Different languages, different spellings. Okay, gotcha. Am I doing a documentary on Tiger King? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Caxon says you're a nervous boy. Will I be making- Yeah, it's true. Will I be making a down the rabbit hole about Warhammer? Eh? I mean, I... I do play Eldrad Ulthran in... As well as a random Dark Eldar in... Um, in If the Emperor Had a Texas Speech Device. That's... Oh, that, that voice. That voice completely destroyed my, like, my throat! For a few days afterward! 
Like, just went absolutely ham with it. <laughs> Fred, are you going to tell a story? People are... Yes, yeah, pe people are asking. Okay, people are actually Fred. interested. Um, I was yeah, wondering yeah. If, if people were interested at all or not. Okay. Why, so, why wouldn't they be? I don't know. Just, it, it's dull. <laughs> My life is dull. I can't... Okay, so... A while ago, um, before down the rabbit hole, you know, a long time ago, right? Before down the rabbit hole, I was an esports caster. I got into it with League of Legends, um, and then League of Legends was never a good game, but it definitely got worse with time. And eventually, uh, Riot announced their LCS series, which was, you know, their big tournament. You know, I was there pretty early on. I started playing when Xin Zhao was released, if anyone, rem like, knows what that means so a long time ago but i noticed the game was changing but the bigger thing was that riot announced the lcs and they sort of said these are the casters that we're going to be using and everyone else is just you know out you no know, you were either inside or outside and i was right on the border but i wasn't on the, in the in circle and i recognized that if I was going to get in, it would be years longer. And even then, the opportunities for me would be, like, null, essentially. It was pointless. So, I let go. Uh, I, I let go of League of Legends, and I sort of puttered around. I played competitive Guns of Icarus for a while. Um, I was on one of the, like, B-tier teams. We were dominant for a while, uh, for, like, a, a short period. We weren't the best team, for sure, but... We, we definitely brought... We, we, we changed the meta, and I'm proud of that, damn it. But I eventually became a caster for that game. And as I was casting that and improving my abilities, an old buddy of mine from my League of Legends days said, Hey, Fred, have you heard about a game called Gigantic? And I looked at it, and I'm like, this is awesome. You know, I play it, and I'm like, this is awesome. So I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm in here on the ground floor of this game, I am, like, if if this game gets big, I want to be ready. Uh, so I sort of wedge myself in there, and I'm, I'm sort of, I, I establish myself as the big caster, right? Like, I'm the guy who um, commentates tournaments. Event, then, then, you know, a lot of people know where this is going. I know I got flown out to um, a couple of events to help present the game, and then the game flopped. Um, for a lot of reasons, uh, but it really just wasn't given a very good chance, even though it was a fantastic game. But Gigantic, so Gigantic, um, but even before it died, the the company was like, hey Fred, you know, because I'm a very much a known quantity at this point, they said, hey Fred, would you be interested in a uh, public relations role, potentially? And I was like, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm guessing you're going to want a video, right? And they said, yeah, yeah, we want to see, like, some of the videos you made. And immediately, on the inside, I'm like, damn it! I haven't made a video in years, because I was too busy streaming and casting. So, I start thinking, what skills do I have? Well, I can narrate. Um, I don't have a lot of really fancy, flashy effects that I can do, but, you know, damn it, I can cut things together nicely. Okay, well, I, what, what really lends itself to those two things? Well, to documentary i guess okay so what should i cover you know well they're, they're a game studio so you know what i'll bet they'll be interested in digital homicide yeah that's what they'll be interested in and i'm like okay well I, I, it's also a really great topic because well nobody's collated all this information together you know this is a great chance for me to show hey i've like i could i have an eye for detail so i'm going to show that off and so i in three days i throw together this video about digital homicide studios and i'm like oh god what do i what do i name it I, I, well, fuck, fuck it, down the rabbit hole. That, that sounds about right. You know, I, no one's going to see this. I uploaded it onto my Google Plus uh, YouTube channel just to have it somewhere so they, like, I can send them a link. And they, they never respond because <laughs> the company was going bankrupt. <laughs> it was, it was not in a good way. They never got back to me. But I was like, you know, I'll bet some people from Jim Sterling's subreddit would be interested in this. So I, you know, copy paste and make a post there. Jim Sterling sees it and tweets out my video. And I get my first few hundred subscribers from it. <laughs> and so I never I never got a call back from Motiga, the, the people who made Gigantic. But it did launch my YouTube career.
<laughs> that that's, that's the story of down the story. rabbit hole. It's, that, it's beautiful. That's how it started. And people are asking about your. They do. I have seen your. You talk about League of Legends on YouTube before when you had kind of Alvin long hair. Um, yeah, yeah. When I, like when I my don't hair know if you. Was... I can. I can. I remember your. Um, username but i don't i don't know if i have your permission to share it no no i i, I i'd like to keep that if people find it great right okay but fine. i but yeah. I, i'm like i, I, I i'm not ready case. to share it with the world it's definitely you know <laughs> it's it's a it's almost a decade old at this point and it is there's definitely a lot more cringy. frederick on the internet than people think there is for the sure I, I mean there's even, a like, lot more frederick on the internet yeah i mean like i you know i was around casting for years right i yeah. i i was around but you no, know, nobody like I, I was only known in very specific circles. It didn't, it didn't really matter. Because I, I actually found it. I can't remember. I was like, um, maybe I was doing. I, I was going to see if I could put together a concert of our music, and it never came to anything. But I was like, I was googling you as much as possible to find some quotes about you, <laughs> which were polite and complimentary. And I was there was like this thing about this this guy, and he had a username. And I was like, "What's where does this username take me?" And I was like, "Oh my God, there's Frederick like ten years ago." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to have really long hair. Like you had enormously long. Yeah, hair. Yeah, down to my chest. It was down yeah. like part way. It was part way down my chest. It, it was. If, if people knew, I, I was finding my footing. I, I, it's, it's not a huge deal, right? Like it's, it, it's whatever. I, I make down the rabbit hole now. I found my footing. I'm, I'm comfy. But you know, and you you shouldn't you know look negatively on things you did in the past, even if they're you know a little bit embarrassing. Like it, uh, it's it's definitely embarrassing. It's imba like I'm not going to be like, oh no, someone found it. It's like okay, whatever. But it's yeah. it's it's kind of fun. It's like a time capsule of where I was back yeah, then. It's, it's... I was watching it. I was like, man, Frederick hasn't changed a bit. Yeah, <laughs> is <laughs> he's the same old he's the same old guy. I feel like I've <laughs> I've mellowed out a lot. Yes, that's true. You were definitely a lot more intense back then. Yes, for sure. It, it's it's kind of, but it's not a huge difference, you know. It's like the smallest, um, you know, alteration in your behavior imaginable. Is it really that? Have have I really not changed that much in the last decade? Am I that mundane? I, I don't want to say. <laughs> asking for me to send. Uh, you can send it to Ra details. Yeah, you can send it to Ark. You can send it to Ark. This is the real tea right now. It's uh, Frederick's old casting career. Ooh. <laughs> it was. Um, I, I was it, part of this. It's just like Legolas, by the way. People saying Legolas in chat is just like yes. Legolas. No, I people compared me to Legolas all the time. Yeah, you looked. I did. I just, you know, <laughs> absolutely, you're just like Legolas. Oh, Talons, it's saying it's weird that my face is off camera, even though people know what I look like. It's because nobody cares what I look like. This is about the T. <laughs> <laughs> What's the T? No, it's, it's just because who cares? Like, I'm I'm not worried about having my face up there. I mean, people were people were a bit weird about you when you first showed your face, right? What? But you, my in, favorite mistakes, comment. But you, yeah, but you don't. Yeah, go ahead. Let it, uh, it, maybe I should read my favorite comment that I've ever. I have my own story. favorite comment about your appearance, which I've mentioned before, but I'll mention it again after you. Okay, okay. Here, I'll, I'll read you guys my favorite comment that I've ever received. It is amazing, I, and I know that some people here are probably familiar with it, uh, but here it is. I, I I can search on my media. I I linked it um like a few like four months ago, so it's really high up on my media on Twitter. And this is an old comment, right? This is a long time ago. Uh, it, it was a comment on the mis the first Mistakes video. I just unsubbed. I was not able to imagine how pathetic you look before. Bye-bye. How can you have the balls to juge? You are as sexy as Chris Chan. <laughs> disgusting face, disgusting mind. Not funny anymore since you are garbage. Just hide yourself. What is the fuck? You are a ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> now, my favorite comment is you were, you were really defensive about this, but was my favorite comment was your comb over can't hide the fact you're going bald. Right. 
<laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> <laughs> And you sent me like this paragraph explaining why you're not going by. Yeah, I remember and, that. I remember that. And how your code of you going. <laughs> I remember. I don't know why that bothered me so much. That was really funny. And it's just, it was just like, it was obviously not true, but like, I loved how defensive you were about it. <laughs> 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 no, it's like I've got the Keanu Reeves hairline, right? Where it's just like really sharp. I feel like the longer my hair gets, the more balding I look. It's like <laughs> if I cut my hair short, I'm like, oh, I'm not bald. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of, I kind no, of I'm, have the. I, I'm not. I've had a really high, like, and really sharp hairline since I was in high school. It's okay, Fred. You don't have to. Explain. I was like, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I want to explain to everyone, to everyone else, but like, it's, I actually. It, it it was never mind you know what i don't even know where i'm going with that the the comment that i shared with you the the best part about the ghoul comment is it's yeah. edited the dude edited it oh yeah and like lu saying could that be a name for my subs my ghouls I, that's something i considered oh this is cool like cool, the Robbie. this last steep of the t is like a neon green it's kind of, it, it looks almost like Mountain Dew, actually. <laughs> Maybe the camera doesn't pick that up so well, but like just looking at it, it's almost Mountain Dewy. I, I can't, I can't actually see it, Fred. I'm so, I, I paused the video. I sound like I'm, I'm constantly narrating a documentary all the time. The weirdest thing, true? imagine, the weirdest thing is talking to Fred outside down the rabbit hole is like, it's such a strange experience because you're used to him narrating and now he's having a conversation with you. Right. I, you're not the first person who's told me that. Like I, I have a small cadre of people that I like reading my scripts to before I send them live. No, before I record them. And I, I've gotten the comment before. It's like, it, it's weird to hear me go from just talking to my down the rabbit hole voice. They're the same voice. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I, I only have one voice. What are you talking about? <laughs> Do I have some Yokuro? No, I don't. All right. You know what? We're bad at answering questions. Yeah, shit. Right. Let's have a look. Give us your questions. Yeah, please. No, I ask us whatever you like about down the rabbit hole and we will answer at our discretion. <laughs> the background music sounds like Silent Hill. Yeah, yeah that's, it's, that's, it's the Temple OS music going right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know which piece. It's Night Vision. Uh, yes, it is. Yep. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it back to the beginning, so that it's not quite so eerie. This documentary we call life. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions are we planning to make mu new albums together well, maybe maybe i mean i think i think you will for it you, you're up for it fred it just uh yeah what's my most enjoyable mode to compose in uh i i enjoyed all i mean i literally enjoy all of it i i i never not happy writing music oh it's my eyes <laughs> Over to you, Fred. Yeah, Haidakata is asking. I love your name. Well, shucks. But why not change your channel name for privacy? Eh? I, my channel name was attached to my name from the very beginning. I actually tried to change it to down the rabbit hole in the beginning, but because Google Plus is a fuck, it wouldn't do it. <laughs> it would not do it. I tried, and it just did not work. Uh, and so now it's just my name. Which actually kind of, in a way, works to my advantage, because it, like, my channel also acts as a por portfolio, in a way. So having my name directly attached to it makes it a little bit more obvious. How did I pick out the theme for Down the Rabbit Hole? I looked around on Incompetech.com and found the first thing. Because remember, I made the first Down the Rabbit Hole in a three-day-long haze. 
<laughs> I hardly slept those three days. I like because I was desperately throwing that thing together. Someone's asking, do I have homosexualoids? The better question is, am I a homophile? And there's some people in chat that know what I'm referencing. <laughs> Did you see that, Ryan? No. The, the, post, the post about someone saying, please change your character's gender. And like saying, you are a homophile. Um, well, and it's you. just the f no, 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 not to me. That this is just okay. like, um, it's a DM that someone sent to someone on Deviant Art that like oh. got passed around, and it's it's almost it's almost a hundred percent a troll, right? It's almost a hundred percent a joke, but it's it's Poe's law. Like we're we're bumping up against Poe's law really hard with it. <laughs> it it's amazing. There's some people. You know what? Um, I'm going to find the tweet. And I am going to link it in chat so you all can read it at your own will. Um, I bet if I just search homophile, I'll find it. Uh, got it. <laughs> right. Only, like, what is it? The power, like, only females have the power of vor. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, here we go. It was on FA Notes. That was the account that posted it. Uh, let me go to their account. Let me find the first one. And then there's a second one as well. I'll just link the first one. I command you. Yeah, immediately change your character's gender. That's If it says I command you, that's definitely a joke. Come on. It It's amazing. Uh, my, my favorite line from it. It, even if it's a joke, it's so funny that it's so good. Um, no, I actually haven't been on DeviantArt in years. It's been a while. Um, Christ, I never was act. I never was active on it at all. But like, God, DeviantArt's still a thing. Like that was the most surprising thing about this is DeviantArt's a thing still. Um, let me see. You know, right. I'm, I'm not Secondly, artist, so. I have spent a grand time using your images for the sake of oneristic practices, and I am feeling <laughs> extraordinary shame for having practiced ownerism, not only to someone of my male gender, but also to the art of a homophile. It's, this whole thing, the whole thing is golden. Just, it's definitely a joke, come on. It, it's it got to be. It, it, absolutely, it absolutely has to be a joke, but it's such a good one. Oh, well, our cats and cities dealt with people like that, so it must be true. I like, but that's the problem, right? It's like for every troll, there's someone who's earnest like that. It's wild. What did you say at the beginning of your SCPS episode? Did you say, what was your quote? What? On the oh, internet, was, was on the internet reality is often more difficult to discern. Or is that that's the it. Mother Horse Eyes one? I can't remember, Fred. It's this, like, see, this is the thing I'm talking about. I can't remember which episode. Mm. Talons, the, f the voice in the old intro is Fredericks. Yes. I think it's been answered before. Yeah, it is. It, it's so, it's so good. I, like, I, I, that intro was also part of the desperate three-day throw together. No, every sound in that, even me going, <laughs> that's just me layering my voice. And yes, I know that the guy sent another one. He sent two messages. So, yeah, okay. Well, Arkaxon thinks it's real, so I agree. <laughs> Arkaxon <laughs> knows better than neither of us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm not very, you know, internet-wise, actually. I just, I just spend so much time, like, working, and, like, I'll, I'll come to... Uh, somebody will say something, and I'm like, what, what do you mean? And I was like, oh, that's a meme, right? I'm like, I never heard that before. I feel like such a boomer. <laughs> Spicy Milk is asking Constantly. if I am an anime character. Yes. Rock. You have got the anime voice, haven't you? Do I? Yeah. Omae wa mo I I I can sort of do the gruff anime voice a little bit. I I I've got 
I've got a little bit of range with my voice. I, I, people keep telling me I need to try out voice acting, and I think it would be fun. And I keep saying that I, mean, I need to get into it. You should, because like people constantly ask you to. I mean, you just need to find something good to work on, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I think people yeah. are making like like projects just to get you to voice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Attila the orc asks, have I read the Eye of Argon? Yes, I read the whole thing with Jabroni Mike in one sitting. You can find it on YouTube if you search. <laughs> Your anime name is Passion Gunchi. <laughs> right, yeah, right. <laughs> I I am amazed that I these are ancient memes. I'm amazed. But they're the best memes, aren't they? They're Passion they're... Gunchi's really classic. It, it's a it's a good one. I'm there are very few memes associated with Down the Rabbit Hole, but the ones that exist, I'm, I'm really happy about. <laughs> Describe my aesthetic. Hmm, the aesthetic for Down the Rabbit Hole. Um, straightforward, direct, monochromatic. Um, Jazz. Hmm? <laughs> Jazz. Jazz, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, subtle. Yeah. And yeah, subtle and um unassuming is my goal. I try I try to make it so that all of my personal decisions Oh my gosh. I told I think I told you about this comment. There was someone who said once I don't read my comments nearly as much as I used to anymore, but I remember recently reading a comment. Someone said that I, I mentioned that, you know, my, my creative process, and they said, I don't think what you do is really creative at all. You just state the facts. And at first I was like, I, I was a little bit like, oh, that's, that's kind of, uh, that's a little bit unkind. But then I realized, wait a minute, <laughs> this means that I made it. Like, I was so subtle about it that he couldn't even tell. Probably because he wasn't paying attention. Because, like, you can always... I need. I still need to make that video. I want to make a video about uh, bias in things that appear to be unbiased. And how saying um, un, uh, an unbiased piece of media is never an accurate thing to say. Like, that, that phrase is um, a paradox. It cannot exist. But um, I, I actually feel pretty good about that. That I was able to hide, like... That I was able to make the work stand on its own so well and get them so interested in the topic itself that they, they didn't recognize the hand of the creator. And for Down the Rabbit Hole, that feels like a success. I, 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 I mean, I agree. I think one of the most interesting things about you, Frederick, is people can't imagine is sometimes you're really strong about certain ideas. Um, right. Because you always kind of talk about how you're unbiased, but uh, being unbiased doesn't really exist. I'm not unbiased. Uh, I, I think no, like but... Okay, go. Oh. Um my my all my videos have bias to a certain degree, but what I try to be is impartial a lot of the time. Now sometimes there are things that are absolutely ridiculous. Um and I will use rhetoric that reflects that if it is just yeah. absurd and over the top. But I'm not going to make a judgment for you. And if I do make a very strong statement, my goal is that by the end, you know, the comments should be going either way. Like either they say they don't know what to think about it, or some people think this, some people think this, the, the, the exact opposite after seeing the video. That's kind of my gauge of success in terms of being impartial. Yeah. Um, and obviously, and obviously sometimes the opinions on something are going to be very... Um, one-sided just because it's kind of hard to interpret certain things any other way like the Final Fantasy house it's like Jen was crazy it's like yeah <laughs> it's <laughs> there, there's not much other interpretation for it yeah but but you get exactly. what I mean right because I'm very biased with all like pretty much all the topics like I form opinions about the things I research of course I do yeah but that's my goal in my videos isn't to present those opinions because I don't think my opinions are that important, but also because that's just not what I, e even if I do think, even if I did think my opinions were that important, that's not the point of down the rabbit hole. 
I think I think it would be less interesting if you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like. There's so many videos on YouTube of people presenting their opinions that it's like we yeah. don't need more. That niche is filled. I, I, I'm I'm the I'm the opinionated one. Yeah, <laughs> the music. The opinion. music is the opinion. Yes, very much so. R Ryan's opinion comes through more than mine in the videos. Uh, but but in the end, you know, I'm always signing off on them. So. We, um, our, our opinion tends to align pretty closely a lot of the time. Sometimes we disagree. Are there any big disagreements you can think of that we've had? Oh, shit. Um, In terms of, checking, like, opinions on topics. Checking our chat. <laughs> um, no, not really. I, I mean... Shit. Uh, no, 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 I can think... Uh, there were some ones, like... Um, I think I felt like some of the pacing in the, um, what's that guy's name? Wings of Redemption video could have been done differently. Yeah, And I, I right. felt like there were some topics, like I felt you could have focused on more on how like seriously deranged the trolls were. But For I sure. think it came, ac I think it came across enough anyway, actually, in retrospect. Mm -hmm. Like I was thinking like, man, these, these trolls are really screwed up. I'm hoping you're making a big deal of this. And you're like, you're like, they get a little, they get a little mention. And I was like, are you, you sure you don't want to talk about them more? Um, and I, but you know, it, 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 I think people realize that. Pretty yeah, I, I think that it's it's a tough line to draw, right? Because the video was already two hours long. Yeah, um, fucking hell. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> like like that week was crazy. So the the week I wrote the music for Wings of Redemption, I was like entering a competition, and like I was submitting like ninety minutes of music. Like the score, um, I want. I want to check how many pages. Sure. While while you check the pages, actually, someone, um, you get that. I'm I'm gonna respond because someone did make a really interesting comment and something that I've considered a lot. Tragic comedy says, "Could this be considered manipulation? Manipulation via media by hiding a bias?" And that's the trick, right? Is at that point, how there's no such thing as a completely impartial piece of media, so. At that point, the only thing that you can really go off of is ethics. Like, how ethical is the creator? Are they going to use them hiding their bias in order to insert their bias into other people? Or are they actually going to try to give an impartial... Or are, is the effort actually going into making an impartial presentation of the events? And that's... At that point, you're kind of at the point of caveat emptor, right? Like, I personally think that if you are making a biased piece of media, then you should, or like something overtly, right? If you're putting your opinion out there, it should be obvious, but I'm, it's tricky, right? It's the ethics of making any kind of media are extremely tricky because I want to present the facts as much as possible and tell this story. Cause there are always a million ways I can tell a story. Um, I'm not, like, I, I feel like I take on an extra responsibility by trying to stick closer to the facts than opinion um, and try, trying to remove my opinion as much as possible. But then again, you, you get to the point where you're trying to be a textbook at that point. And then it's not a piece of media anymore. It's facts laid out as dryly as possible. And I am still trying to make something that's enjoyable from beginning to end. Like, there's a balance that I'm trying to strike there. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get the most out of both. How can I be inf as informative as possible while not influencing their opinion? But, the, but at the same time, I'm still telling a story and sort of telling it from one particular angle. It's... It's, it's a hard line to balance. And I don't have a good answer. I, and like I said, you know, my goal is that by the end of the video, you sh people should have all different kinds of opinions. And not try, uh, and not feel influenced one way or the other. Because I'm not trying to force my opinion down anyone's throat. Most of the time, I don't... I'm not looking to change people's opinions because it doesn't really matter to me. It's 
it's hard. And I, I try to solve that problem through craft in terms of... Like, it, it's hard to vocalize and it, it's hard to break this problem down because it's an incredibly complicated problem. Because when you tell a story from a particular angle, it you are going to run into the problem of bias. Always. Um, I've been to school. It's 150 and two and a half hours of music. But how long was uh, Wings of Redemption? Two and a half hours? Wings of Redemption was like two hours, ten minutes, including okay, the so credits, so. right around there. So that was like one week, two hours and ten minutes of music and <laughs> 133 page score mm -hmm. submitted uh, that was a that was a dark <laughs> that was a tough it wasn't a dark week it was a tough week you know uh -huh. yeah it was it was very subtle it I, I feel like you have a tall order trying to um, <laughs> be so subtle with the music without being yeah. too obvious because it is it's hard to do it in the medium of music. I feel like my what? brain is breaking down at this point. I'm. <laughs> well, I mean, I am think, I making I think... sense? I feel like I'm rambling at this point. Oh, I'll jump in then. I think uh, with the music, I would say that uh, the pro one of the most difficult aspects is I gotta keep it interesting, but underneath your voice, you know, your voice should be the center of attention. Mm -hmm. And you know. It, it, the music can follow the progression of the story, but it also must work with your voice, and that's very, um, that's very complicated and quite difficult to do. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you when I when oh. I first started, you're always banging on about uh, keeping it underneath your voice. Yeah, I was saying like leave the mid range open for my voice. And you're actually more difficult. A trusty guy is a bit easier to write for because she has a higher voice. Yes. And yeah. she escapes a lot of the music more easily. So that's why a trusty guy's music is a bit more active in some places. Yeah. And it's... she leaves space for solos. She does, yes. <laughs> <Which is nice. laughs> she, she's a lot kinder than I am in that regard. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's not about kindness, it's about, you know, the product. Uh, oh fuck, I said product. Terrible. It's about your what you're trying to make, right? Yeah. It's but, it's just it's just a different aesthetic. I mean, working, you know, if I had any advice to it, it says anybody who work in media music in the comments is, you know, you need to, the most important person in the room when you're making some person, if mm -hmm. you're working in film, is the person making the film, you know? Like, yeah. Frederick's the head, the head honcho of Dana Rebel. So you've got to listen to it. It's, it's kind of my role as director in a way to make sure that everything is cohesive. Like, everything has yeah. to work together. Let's see, questions. Because I feel like I, yeah. I, we spend forever on one question. When is Dana Rabbit Hole Big Chungus dropping? Fred? <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Skeletal Man was saying they're from uh, Russia. Thanks for hanging yeah, out. No, just, I'm just laughing at him trying to spell by. But yeah, <laughs> well, bid beer. Why, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> uh, there's one for you, about Mother Horse. Yeah, what's my honest opinion on Mother Horse size? Do you did you like the way it was presented, or do you think the bombarding Reddit users with gore could be potentially problematic? I thought it was fantastic. I think. Um, I like that it just comes out of nowhere and freaks people out. I, I think sh it, it may not be for everyone, right? And it may freak people out, but at that point, you, you scroll past it. There's a scroll wheel, and it's, it's easy to get past it. Plus, his text. Like, if, if he was putting in, you know, pictures, that might be a different story. But it's text. It's easier to scroll past and just not read. games do you play if any uh me and fred used to stream human full flat we did for we did a couple times that was fun yeah and it was hilarious because i was in shanghai and to <laughs> play the game i had to use like a v and like steering the human full flat what do you call it mannequin was yeah. like steering a ship there would be like a yes. four second delay before like the character moved so it was like 
sometimes I just content myself by watching you do things. And then I'll be like, hey, Fred, look at me. I'm dancing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you really tried a lot of the time. I, I, I think that you, you downplay your hustle. You hustled a lot. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a try hard at uh, uh, human, human fall, fall flat. flat. Yes. <laughs> Are we gonna see? We should down... do another. We should do another one. It'll... Yeah, yeah. Be, it'll be good because you... we, we always you down low, like kind. Of... Don't share them with a lot of people. You should um... do tabletop simulator. Yeah, but I ruined the last game we played. Like <laughs> I was just breaking the rules and you weren't noticing. Right. Like... Yeah, we played Ascension. I yeah. love Ascension. <laughs> I remember that. And and you were like, we just play until we run out of power chips. And I was like, oh, I've been re I've been replenishing those. So I just been like grabbing them. Or yeah, whatever, right. And <laughs> lengthening the game. Yeah. That's the only game I've ever won against you, and I was cheating the whole time. <laughs> Stardust is asking if there's ever going to be a down the rabbit hole on me. Why why are people so interested? In I I don't I don't understand. You can you, can, you know after your. Uh, casting career people are definitely curious now. 10 years of history frederick it's, it's boring history <laughs> <laughs> just like DSP's it's really boring 10 years of history <laughs> yes <laughs> I, I i'm gonna have to do a dsp update video at this point really at, at some point like not now obviously there's there's a whole saga after a troll bought his debt that's like absolutely next level incredible yeah. God. Oh. Was it? Uh, Secretagent Pasta, I think. Yes. Do negative comments get to you? Or are you confident enough in your filmmaking to l not let it get to you? Negative comments don't bother me anymore. But that has more to do with my experience as a creative in general than it does with like being on YouTube a while. It does I think like after sort of Five, five years of doing your, your thing right you kind of just no no you've been doing it less than that less no, than that yeah YouTube 10 years but i well i mean I like, like... I, i've been making content right i've been like i've been a caster and i got ripped i was terrible in the beginning right i was horrendous but of course yeah. we all start out bad um but i was particularly bad but i i mean just I, i'm used to criticism it doesn't and it doesn't bother me and i can recognize when criticism is useful and it also helps that i recognize that what i make isn't for everyone like not everyone yeah. is going to enjoy everything that I make. It's because they it they normally me. make me laugh. That's the thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I, used they... to to I used to want to share them, and you're like, ah, oh, come on, Ryan, don't feed the trolls, you know. But you get to share your negative comments. This is uh, <laughs> this is double standards right here. I know, I I know. Hypocrisy. <laughs> my my favorite one was the guy who just said, "Your music is ass." <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. I mean, you could be right. <laughs> oh, but, you know, they do, they do, they're funny. That's the point. I, um, I, I think he's they in are. the news bit these days. Like, Louis Farouk is in the news because of the Tiger King documentary. You know, sure. Boxing. But, um, because he did, he met, met the, the Tiger guy years ago. And he did a documentary about prisons. And they're like, this, there's this, like, uh, prison officer. And he was, like, laughing the whole time. And he's, like, People in their cells were shouting at him. It's like, why? Louis was like, why are you smiling? It's like, a lot of what they say amuses me, and that's that's kind of how I feel when people leave like rude comments. It yeah, yeah. Generally makes me laugh. Yeah, no, know? it's after a while, it's so hard to be bothered by it. I, I think that there are some people that never quite move beyond it for sure, and they often yeah. become lol cows because they stay, but they're still bothered by it. They take it personally, yeah. and it's not personal most of the time so like even if it is a personal attack what do they really know about you right like un unless you're throwing your personality out there and even then at that point it's why why do they care like why do you that's care that's just real life though isn't it people it is real life at that point you're just at, at real life literal lucas remembers fred the shoutcaster yeah literal lucas <laughs> I, that that's a name that's a name that i has been around for a long time Somebody asking what the Tiger King is. I haven't seen it. It's a documentary about Joe Exotic. Is that the right name? I guess. Oh, yeah. Somebody commented. Perfect timing. Yeah, Joe, Joe Exotic. Exotic. Okay, perfect. Do a video about Free Pap, an Israeli indigenous movement in Peru. 
that has been through a lot of bad practices and controversies. That sounds like a Jake Hanrahan thing, potentially. More so, more so than um, down the rabbit hole. I mean, people come up with a lot of good uh, There are ideas so many good topics, time. right? There are yeah, so many good sometimes topics. Sometimes you spend a lot of time kind of going, is this a Frederick Knudsen uh, idea? Or is this like a Jake Hanrahan idea? Or is this an internet historian idea? Yeah. Because I think, I think I, fundamentally, it's you personally, right? Hmm? So you broke you up to a speak little bit. To you Sorry, uh, you have to speak. Um, it has to speak to you personally, right? Right, right. I, I have, because a lot of what I do is passion. Like I, yeah. and that that's why I think that down the rabbit hole is something that I can do sustainably for a long time. Is because there's always something new that I'm passionate about and interested in. So it, it's hard to be disinterested in making down the rabbit hole. I think that's the most important thing. Anybody out there, I'd say, you know. Look, find something you're passionate about, mm -hmm. you know, and um, chase it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm passionate. I, you know, my you know my music is all about what I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about Dan Rabbit, so I I give it all my give it my all. Oh, I'm my so I'm so music glad. Is, I, yeah, I mean, of course I am. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't still be here, even regardless of the money. I would still be here. You know, there's lots mm -hmm. of ways I could you know easily make a living. Yeah, but you know, I want to be making a living with things that, things I'm passionate about. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm really glad that you always make a make time for down the rabbit hole. It well, you know, it's, means, it's not, it's it means fun. a lot. But um, you know, in my concert music, it's all about things I'm passionate about. For years, I was like par paralyzed by this kind of fear. What would people think about my, work, you know? And it was it was just stupid. Mm -hmm. the, the whole time, I should have just been asking myself, what do I love? Why do I yeah. love? It? And, putting it into what I make. Yeah, you know? I mean, that that's how down the rabbit hole happened, sort of. Like, I basically looked at, okay, here are all the skills I have, right? Here are the things that I'm really confident in. How can I bring them all together into one thing? And, and down the rabbit yeah, Frederick, hole is, you... like, it, down the rabbit oh, yeah. hole takes advantage of all of the skills that I have really refined, I think. One of the things you kind of, you're always a bit unwilling to talk about is your writing as well. And um, you always kind of put yourself down when it comes to your, your writing, your short story. My fiction. My fiction is fiction. always a little subpar. No, no, but you... there. Okay, so because we, we can have very honest conversations with each other. Because some of it is, there's one... Uh, you, in your collection, there's one story I say, this story is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know? The others are hit or miss, but this one story is fantastic. Uh, bloated, right? Um, or no, but, um, no, sorry. Um, Gideon's Song. Oh, Gideon's Song, yeah. That Gideon's was the song. one that you really liked. That And I think everybody likes it. And I think you're proud of it, too. Yeah, that's the one I'm most proud of. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it's something... You, you have an understanding of that idea, but the passion drives the art. Mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely... Sort of more art, yeah, go ahead. When I wrote that collection, The Descended Eye, I know it's not available anymore because I took it off because I'm not proud of it. I could... I, I made it a PDF a while ago, and um, I, I could make it available. Like again, I could link it. I I have no problem with it, uh, with people reading it. Just know that I'm not proud of it. It's not very good by my standards. I want to go back. I like some of the ideas in them enough. Like and they speak to me enough that I want to go back and rewrite some of them. Do you think it's like uh, too easy? to remove things from the internet these days. <laughs> no, it's it's really hard to remove things from the internet. No, but you've once... taken your book down. But I think you should just accept your book. Do you know what I, mean? I, I don't, I don't want to sell it. I don't want to accept money for it. That's the big problem. I'm not worried about okay. it being out there. The, the problem is finding a, a distribution place for it. You um, should put a link on your Twitter, though. Yeah, I need to upload on, it to like it. Dropbox or something. Yeah, put it uh, I, I need Dropbox. to make a Dropbox account. I don't think I have a do Dropbox now, account. Please. I'm not going to make a Dropbox account right now. That's an excuse. Uh, on Come stream, on. on stream. I'll do it after stream. stream. I'll do it after stream. If you don't, uh, who's, who, uh, do you, can you tell us who's on tomorrow? Because uh, I'll get in contact with them and make sure they ask. Okay, okay. Uh, tomorrow tomorrow is, I think, Nick Nocturne. Okay, I'm, I'm messaging. Uh, I'm, I'm double checking. Hold on, give me a second. Uh, it's... 
Fred, yes, you yes, tomorrow's Nick schedule. Nocturne. Huh? Okay. You don't even remember your own schedule. I No, I remembered it. I, I just gave you the name of the person. It's... But you had to look it up. Okay, but I no, I, I didn't have to look it up. I said it, and then I said, let me double check. Damn it. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> God damn. Don't know rabbit holes. Don't don't know rabbit holes cancelled everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> Down the rabbit holes never happening ever, ever again. <laughs> sorry, I lost you, Fred. My my internet's been uh -oh. Okay, hello. It's fine, we're back, we're back. Don't worry. Good. Any right, more we... questions? Fire, yeah, any more fire, questions and then I'm gonna get to super chats. This again went long. <laughs> yeah. They always go long. But we, we actually don't talk enough, really. We don't. We don't We don't chat enough. I agree. It's a loose saying, say the line. I don't know which line it is. Let's see. Who else is on the schedule? Yeah, I, I, I haven't been announcing them, but I've got Nick Nocturne. I've got Evan Hadfield. I've got Atrocity Guide, and I've got Regular Car Reviews. Those are the four people coming up. What kind of equipment do you use to make the Rabbit Hole episode? Oh yeah, sure. Um, I've got my desktop, obviously. Um, it's it's a it's a gaming rig, like a mid-range gaming rig. Um, for audio, I've got you no know, beyond the mic stand and pop filter. Obviously, I use a Sennheiser E eight thirty eight to record, um, and then I have a Behringer. Um, what was it X twelve oh four USB? Uh, Zenix, uh, sorry, Zenix X1204 USB. Uh, I got it really cheap. I got it secondhand, uh, barely used for way under market value. Otherwise, I would have gotten a smaller one. Um, and that's what I use for recording. And then uh, for sound dampening, I put a blanket over my head. I, I am not kidding. <laughs> it's one of the funniest things you'll ever see is the picture of Frederick's blanket selfies. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've done a couple. It's one of the most endearing parts of the Dona Rabbit Hole production. Because, <laughs> like, sometimes I feel like you send me, like, the narration, and I'm like, ah, uh, here comes the narration. Gotta plug it into my door. Gotta make some music here. And, mm. like, sometimes you just send me, like, here's a picture of my building. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this, is, this is a real experience now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's one of the most wonderful parts of making the show is you, your oh. recording oh. selfies. <laughs> well, it's all done now. I actually found a better way to do it. I, I got some lighting equipment a little while ago, some cheap lighting equipment. Um, and I got some really nice clips with it. Do I have any of them on hand? No, I, I moved them. But I clip it to the top of my desk right up there. And then <laughs> I have a couple of light stands that I clip it to as well. And I make a little fork. Make a little recording for it. <laughs> it's so sweet. It's so it's so um, I was childlike. I was gonna say infantile. That's the wrong one. If it There's works, so many... you can't tell the difference though, right? It sounds no, the true. same. There are people asking for blanket selfies. I I have one on Twitter. Hold on, I'll link it. Oh really? Yeah, I I, I tweeted it out at one point. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It's it's not. It can't be that far back. Here we go. Got it. Welcome to my recording studio. There, I just linked it in chat. Maybe I can just download the image and then... <laughs> oh, this isn't the same, though. It's not actually you inside it. No, it's I'm not inside it. with big books as well. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. This is before I got the clips, so... It's yeah, CDRs it. on the side as well. It's like it's in the... We're back in the 1990s. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Questions. <laughs> That's the uh, wings music. Yeah. Here we go. Holy okay, crap. I've got it. Uh, here's the. Oh God, it's huge. Eh. Make it smaller. Make it fit. Here we go. Uh, this is <laughs> this is quality. All right, I'm putting it up on stream now. So you all can oh, see I can't it. see. There, it. there's my recording studio. You could describe it. <laughs> there's my recording studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh there's a there's a good question here fred what there's one about your hoodie goodie 
D slash G or G slash. Oh yeah, I, I do it typically in CG tune or GC tuning. Yeah. If you want to hear how his trom trumpet techniques coming along, you should listen to the album. It, it's not well. That one wasn't really refined. I I specifically was trying to make it kind of chaotic and imperfect. Um, it was more for accent than it was for like keeping the beat. Uh, but it's okay. It's it's still not the best. But it's definitely I'm definitely way more comfortable with my trumpet technique than I used to be. It's it's very challenging for my. It is. Um, it's it's by far the least intuitive part of playing the hurdy gurdy. I'm part of a hurdy gurdy group on Facebook. There I say. And, oh, are you? Um, some of the trumpet technique is absolutely unbelievable. Oh, like they'll yeah. go to gigs and they'll film some people playing, and I'm just like, oh my god, what the hell is this? No, it's, so it's crazy. It's so fast. Yeah. I I don't I don't know if I'll ever be able to hit that level of speed and and i'm just partially because i'm just not as interested in trumpet like i don't enjoy i don't in, I, it's fun to do right the reason that hurdy gurdis use it mostly is because it's fun yeah <laughs> but i don't I, that's not the reason that i got into the instrument but you have you know you have roughness on your side which is something that gets lost the more you learn and roughness is you know a well, fascinating can, part of music i can play cleanly i like I've practiced enough that I can get quite clean melodies, but that's not what we were going for for Answerer. No. No. The answer is, the title comes from the ancient Egyptian, um, what, what would you describe it as? Burial artifact? The, the statues that are meant to be servants to the person Yes, we, we saw those. When, yeah, when, yeah, in the museum. Yep. So I was like, oh, maybe this is an interesting... We should we should use this for the the album because we do, I think we were recording yeah we were recording it yes uh, we'd already started yep and I felt yeah, really guilty because I'm like oh, I'm seeing you in person and now you can get on my ass for not sending you the recordings <laughs> <laughs> you sent me the recording so it was fine <laughs> what actions have you taken to help your channel grow the most hmm have helped no oh. um some of those are trade secrets um oh they're not they're nothing that like underhanded though there, there's nothing underhanded that i'm doing but it's um yeah, it's specifically like the topics that i choose and how i choose them i'm very particular about it and i think that more than anything has grown my channel you do mention things like soaking in the algorithm I've yeah well that, that's more before. on that that's more on the technical side um there, there are things that i do um that are still there are a little bit more forward facing that have helped to that's helped to grow the cha grow the channel but frankly the best thing that i did was changing my paradigm so that i'm don't just mindlessly do like if you're trying to make it on youtube don't just mindlessly do what other people tell you to do first ask why are they doing it and then figure out if what they're doing applies to what you're doing. So, for example, the strategy of uploading every week, uh, which is what most people will tell you to do on YouTube, does not fit for me. And I still am doing just fine. It's kind of weird because I feel like people feel like YouTube for forces you into a certain way of making stuff. But maybe that's not necessarily true. Not as true. Like, there are certain things that you have to do, but not quite... It's not as restrictive as people think. They just... There are people with rules, but the rules are constantly changing, and they are not uniform. You... What works for one person will not necessarily work for the next. I think the most difficult thing to teach people is uh, judgment. Yeah. Y you Judgment's can't... really important in any mm -hmm. kind of career. And people was like, Ryan, how do I how do I do this? How can I? What are the rules to writing good music? And I'm like, listen, you need judgment, <laughs> you know. And I can't, you can't, you can't be taught that. You have to learn it. Oh, Zemo Nitrom's here. I I used to watch his "It Is Wednesday, My Dude" videos. I, I kept up with them. I was I was always up to date with them. <laughs> and he's saying, "Yep, uploading every week is horrible." Yeah, I remember True. trying to upload uh, down the rabbit hole every two weeks, and that was a nightmare. I can back I'd be you up dead. on that one. You would actually kill me. Yeah, I, I, I would. <laughs> but then again, they were only 15 to 20 minutes long usually. Back You'd then. still kill me. I'd still kill you, yeah. Yeah. 
If they made an action figure of me, what add-on accessories would be included? Tea making action. But what he he shoots tea out of his fist. Um <laughs> and yeah, load him up with tea. Fi like dip him in tea and push down on his head. He fires. Wow. <laughs> he would he would have a goodie. A hurdy gurdy for sure. And then with like a teeny tiny little like speaker that plays, you know, Stella Splendens, like a, a, a crappy little clip of Stella Splendens out of a crappy little speaker. Do I sometimes feel the only way to make money is just streaming due to ad rates? No, not at all. I'm, I never stream. After I'm done with this series of streams, I'm not going to stream for a very long time on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Your Twitch channel is kind of more personal. So it's, I, I, I sometimes. I think you do, like it being still. Cool. It still like never happens. Yeah. Is this mm, once a month? If that. No, not even, not even anymore. The problem is always like, oh, I kind of want to stream, but I should work. <laughs> That's always the problem. I think that this is actually a good place to call it. Let's let's yep. check out the super chats and then we'll call it for today. Yep. And I can get back to cutting together the audio for you. I'm feeling way better now. I was in a serious <laughs> funk. Like that that's the problem that I've noticed is that it's really hard to just like I don't feel like working, but I'm just going to push through it and do it because that's how you get subpar work. I'm always afraid that my work is going to be really crappy if I yeah. just push through it because that's happened before. And so it's it's tricky right if you're sometimes if you're in a funk it's not the best thing to just push through it not just because of burnout but because you get us like subpar quality work yeah how moist am i right now <laughs> i'm fine i don't tend to get swamp ass i'm very fortunate i was i was blessed with a body that does not get terribly moist <laughs> and yeah, this Arc's, Arc's class, finishing this up. It's a classy stream. It's a classy stream. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. All right. Now, all right. Yeah, so, I, wish, I wish we could talk more about art. Actually, we should do some classy art streams. Yeah. Um, I, I like chatting with Elise all the time about it. Whenever yeah. we get the chance, we just chat about art, and it's always a productive conversation. Yeah. Let's go ahead and check out Super Chats and call it for today. Thank you so much yep. for joining. No, no, no problem. This, is, this has been fantastic. Appreciate it. Yeah. Because I'm kind of a no, I'm kind of a, a nobody compared to you. Oh, psh. Um, you're you're out here wild and make. <laughs> you're making you're making the videos with me, man. Yeah, it's true. The, the silent partner who makes noise. Mm-hmm. It's good. Yeah, he, he just he just sits there. He sits behind me and goes rah, 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 while I'm researching all day. <laughs> okay. Steve Parker. Super chat says thanks for the documentaries. Helps pass the time. My pleasure. It, it I'm so glad that I can help people pass the time during quarantine. Corgi Tastic says your stream goes super well with some Animal Crossing. Perfect. That's that's exactly what I'm going for. Kipple Draws says, I'm sensitive to bitterness and tannins, so tea is hard to get into. Recommendations? White tea. White tea is a great way to get into it because it's hard to screw up white tea. It's You might not get the best flavor out of it. You might not get the most that you possibly can out of it, but it's hard to completely ruin it. Gen Mai Cha as well. Gen Mai Cha is a really forgiving green tea because of the roasted rice. Um, Gen Mai Cha is also called popcorn tea. So if you search that, you can find some for sure. West Coast Emerald Bowl says, thoughts on the Walt Disney Concert Hall's wacky architecture. I'm not familiar with it. Ryan? I'm Googling it. Okay. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's it's kind of it's kind of funky. Temporarily closed. Yeah, no shit. Um, oh yeah, it's 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 kind of like uh, imagine taking aluminium cubes and kind of warping them. It's it's pretty cool. Okay. 
I mean, I'm not an architect, so I don't yeah. know what I'm I'll, talking I'll, about. I'll look it up, too. Uh, do you have a link, actually? I just Googled it, Fred. Okay, hold on. You'll find it straight away. Walt Disney Concert <laughs> the Hall. The clacky keyboard. It's great. Oh, yeah, so people have been asking me about the keyboard in chat, and I just never responded. It's, uh, it's a cooler master with cherry blues. Cherry blues are really good for typing, by the way, if you do a lot of typing. And you're not worried about bothering, like, anyone you're in the room with. Oh, wow, that is wacky. It looks cool. It looks I distinctive. I used to uh, be a steward. But it's a modern hall as well. It's similar to this, but it's not a wacky shape. Mm. It's got very good acoustics. Mm. I used to do that kind of shitty job where people used to like occasionally punch me in the face because they didn't like me moving them from the seats. Gotcha. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. Uh... Arizona Yu-Gi-Oh! Village. Bro, links for a tea set? The whole thing? Um, problem is, this came from China. Ryan got this for me. This, um, this tea tray also came from China. Ryan got it for me. Um, <laughs> this you can find in any tea shop. Like, these are really cheap. Uh, I mean, hell, you could even make your own with, like, just a, with a little bit of wire mesh. But if you get a fine one, then you can stop more particulates from getting into the tea that you drink. But no, these are easy to find. This is cheap. And this, you can go online. Just look up tea tasting set. You'll find these for 12 bucks. Like, these two together are 12 bucks. It's it's really easy. I'm just thinking how I, I, I the stuff I bought you from China was potentially poisonous. But... Oh, pshh. <laughs> We'll find out. No, I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I get the chemical yeah, this, analysis this, done. We need to find out. This is, uh, I'm this curious. is a real mystery. Yeah. Big Guy asks, um, Sorry if I've asked this before. Connection's trash. But are there any teas that can ease a nauseous gut? Uh, ginger. Ginger's good. Chamomile can help too with honey. Honey with both of them can be really nice. Um, nothing too acidic or astringent. I'd avoid like green teas. Uh, even white teas, maybe. Uh, lots of herbal teas are good for that. But as for just, like, regular old teas, probably not. Uh, look for chamomile and ginger. I'm sure that there are some other suggestions, too. Uh, Hopcool. Yeah, these are the super chats again, by the way. Hopcool, keep up the fantastic work, man. Thank you. I am desperately trying. <laughs> Colin Behunen. Good name. Asks, if we if you saw a rabbit hole while on a camping trip, would we ever see you again? I see more squirrel <laughs> holes than rabbit holes. So yes, bro, you'd be okay. Talons of Water writes, do you use WorldCat when researching for down the rabbit hole? If not, where do you go for researching down the rabbit hole topics? Also, happy birthday, Ryan. Um, not oh, WorldCat. A lot of the time, it's just regular old search engine searches. Um, to start with, like, the very basics, then I find keywords and then use those to refine the searches, if I'm talking internet topics. And then I'll try to find, uh, forums often that are talking about these things, because forums sometimes archive things surprisingly well. <laughs> that, there that's... are a lot of, like, tricks you can use to research for yeah, um, I, I have, I've researched some of my own topics in depth, and there's some real tricks you can use to bring out some really strange information. It's it's basic stuff, right? It's a lot of the tools that you use are not like super obscure or unique. Yeah. It's just finding the terms is the hard part. Peter Mellon. Maybe. Mo oh, sorry. huh. Go ahead. Maybe maybe that research will end up in a Warren's episode one day. Yeah, maybe. Peter Melling, happy birthday, Ryan. Also. Yeah. Fred, would you consider a down the rabbit hole on Alex Day, former YouTube musician slash Charlie McDonald's old friend turned disgraced man? I'm not familiar with Alex Day. I think I know this guy. Is he... If I'm think, Yes, it's who I'm thinking of. He was accused of sexual abuse. I, I, okay. I never... It was, in the, it was in the news in the UK, because he's from... Uh... Okay. I think he's English, right? Yeah, he's English. Uh, as a rule, I kind of shy away from sexual abusers, because I feel like there's... I want, I don't want my subjects to be so black and white. I don't want it to just be like, here's this terrible, unredeemable person. Let's talk about them for an hour and a half. I'm less interested in that. Um, there has to be something redeeming. 
most of the, if I'm going to talk about an individual person. So it's unlikely if it really is, you know, sexual abuse. Uh, small free 15s. Tignot. My birthday is on April 8th, and despite my significant other getting an MS diagnosis, oh god, the Megalame Apocalypse left me with spare dollars, and I've been following you from the start. Well, thank you so much for the support. I, I really appreciate it. It means a lot that people are supporting me, even during all of this. Manteris, cheap loser. Thanks for the buck. I appreciate it. MKD. <laughs> Zarko Tchaikovsky, Ch just based on the name. Where was where is that from? MKD. I'm gonna look. Googling it. Like that. Macedon. What Macedonia. Was it? Macedonian dinar. <clears throat> See, I know dinars from Mountain Blade. That's <laughs> like, oh, dinars. <laughs> it's an actual thing. Kind of like rupees are an actual thing, right? Like my 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 little my little middle school mind was blown when I learned that rupees were an actual. Are you currency. serious? Yeah. Well, I mean, when I was really little, right? You know, before I knew. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what? Okay. In America, you're so sort of cut off from the world. <laughs> like you learn about these things and it's like whoa <laughs> dakota thanks for the super chat fred is giving the gays everything they want i think he's referring to us <laughs> i i, I no, remember seeing that it's I think... all you fred it's all you fred no <laughs> it's us it's us ryan <laughs> ethan stapley Asks, can you cancel your current video production so you can instead make a video about my hometown, Great Yarmouth, in the UK? Yeah. People would love that. Am I missing context? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna no. do a quick Google. <laughs> I think it it might be a, a joke. I can't. Yeah. There's not very. In, maybe I don't know. I think it's kind of. The joke is it's an unremarkable place, dare I say. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good. It looks like it has a nice uh, beach. I go there. Oh, nice. And a fun fair. Oh, is it, is it in Norfolk? Hang on. Yes, it's in Norfolk. Okay. okay. It's definitely not worth covering. Okay. <laughs> Hands of As Asclepius. There we go. Hands of Asclepius asks, Have I seen Beastars yet? No, but I've started reading it. I'm reading the manga. I know that the anime is good. I've heard that it's really good, but I want to read the manga first. West Coast Emerald Bull. Thought on Aaron Carter's tragic life. I'm not super familiar. Wait, is it? Hold on. He's the, is he the guy who stole that guy's artwork on the internet? <laughs> He's <laughs> on the a internet. rapper. Okay, I, I'm not familiar with like rap yeah. drama at all. Yes, he stole that guy's art, and it was like, it was a Twitter, a kind of Twitter food. Okay, gotcha. And was a parent? Is he alive? He said Aaron Carter is, and okay. He is, he is alive, yeah. I thought I saw was, and I'm like, wait, what? Lou, sup Lou, you just lost the game. Thanks. Cockitus Media. Hey, Fred, have you ever heard of Newgrounds animator Emily Yulkis? Yusis? Why are you CIS? She was kind of famous, but in 2016, she had a mental breakdown and became a neo-Nazi. I've never heard of this. I never was super into Newgrounds. I knew some. I knew the basics. But, like, I, I'm not familiar with this person at all. There, I, I think a lot of people have this impression of me that i'm like this mega online person who knows everything online but that's just so unbelievably untrue <laughs> and then rip got a hook what are some topics you adamantly will not make a video on but find interesting um the first one i go to is onision i'm not making a video on onision it i, I already said it on twitter but the video would just be me talking about how awful he is over and over again. It would just be a series, it would just be listing all of the awful things that Onision has done in a big laundry list, and nobody would have a good time. <laughs> it would be boring. 
it would be dry, it would be frustrating, and that's it. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I think that there are better topics. And yeah. he's already covered by The Right Opinion. The Right Opinion did a good series on him, Jay Aubrey. You know, there are plenty of people talking about him. I'm not necessary. And that's it. Those are the super chats. I think we're good. You 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 never cover murder. That's another thing. Murder. Yeah. Uh, that that that's sort of something I haven't like specifically codified in anything official yet. But I, I as a rule, don't cover murder because I'm uncomfortable with journal journalism's place in. I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm a journalist, but I feel like talking about it glorifies it in a lot of cases. Especially the way that I tend to present things. So Very sensational. I, I'm not I'm not comfortable potentially being a part of that problem. I feel like it's a step too far for me. Yeah. And that's it. I think that this that's is a it. good time to call it. Thank you very much, Fred everyone. Been, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Right. Everybody's right. been a pleasure. It's been great. It's been great having you on and chatting with you. This has been fantastic. Oh, it's always, it's always good chatting with you. Let me see. I'm going to link your Twitter one more time. This will be archived. I'll I'll get it up on the other channel right away. I I, I was slow about it the other days, but it'll be so. I'll do it really soon after, in the next couple of hours. So don't worry. This will be up. All right. I'm going to copy-paste Ryan's Twitter one more time if you're interested in getting music lessons from him. Do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very fair. I'm a very fair teacher. I'm, I'm also going to be getting lessons from him. Yeah, like, it's true. Yeah, I'm... Yep, I'm, I'm on that list. I got in early. <laughs> you're, the, I got, I got you're my first student. A <laughs> little bit of nepotism. I was like, I was like uh, Fred, I might just want line lessons. And you're like, ah, oh, give me some. Yeah, no, I, my music, my music theory is terrible. Yeah, I, I want, I want to take my music theory up, like I, and and I want someone there, like helping me with it. So I'm really like, I'm, I'm excited to bring my music theory up to snuff. All right, I appreciate it, Frederick. Yeah, let's so call if, it up. If you, if you'd like lessons, there are still a few slots open. They're gonna close quick. So you probably don't have a lot of time to think on it, <laughs> frankly, especially now that I've like shouted it out. I doubt that there will be yeah. any slots remaining by the end of the day, frankly. So if you're interested, we'll see. We'll you're see. gonna have to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but even even in a couple of days, um, there are some people who might bounce out because you're giving uh, pre like example lessons. I've got 100% retention so far. If that's okay, a, so <laughs> if, that's, if that's a good sign, then I should mention that. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah, that's good to mention. But yeah, message him anyway, uh, just in case someone drops. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll thank see you, so you all much. again very soon. Ryan, it, it's it's always good chatting with you. Oh, thank you, Fred. All right, bye. Bye.